the meeting. Call the meeting. Adjourn. Second. All right. It is 7.03. Welcome to Appropriation Committee meeting. Um, tonight is our uh, public hearing, so I just want to give the agenda what we have tonight. Uh, first on the agenda, we have open forum, who just, anyone who wants to make public comment. Uh, the second will be uh, our public hearing. We'll open the meeting for public hearing. And then uh, we are going to discuss, uh, we still have some uh, uh, business to do uh, re regarding the budget. We'll review the budget and we'll start uh, making some decisions on some of the articles on the warrant. And uh, I believe that, and we can also do some minutes if we, uh, I know we did get a set of minutes if, from uh, Wayne today. Um, so anyway, um, we're getting ready to get started. Um, for the open uh, comment, does anyone have any, uh, anything to talk about? I don't think so. Um, so uh, next item is the public hearing. I move to open to uh, public hearing. I'll second. All those <coughs> in favor of opening? Aye. Aye. Five, Aye. Five, five, okay, so uh, are you here for any public comment on the public hearing tonight? It's Vince, right? Not yet, not until I hear what's going on. Okay, um, so if there was nobody here, we would probably just move on. Okay. But, uh, but if you'd like to hear, we have a presentation, or at least our uh, uh, the Appropriation Committee report that we can go over and discuss the budget, I guess. Um, I know it's on the uh, projector. So, so are you going to leave the public meeting open? And yes, the public meeting. And is then still I mean the the, o hearing? the public hearing. The public hearing is open. And okay. This is part of the public hearing. Okay. So, great. Um, Super. Just just trying to track. So I guess do you want to go over what we have for the budget? Have you seen the budget, uh, or you'd like to see? Okay. Okay, so we're essentially we're making our recommendations. Um, I don't know. Do you have control? I don't have control. I'll throw it out there. It's okay, we can go on to the next slide. Basically, our, our, we're still working on our report, uh, but essentially uh, the overall impact is... Uh, can you just go on to the next slide? I mean, it's a scroll. It's a sc who has control? I have no idea who has control. I, I do. It's, um, so this is the, the report, the draft report. Okay, so yeah, we're, we're still working on the draft of the report, if you can, if you can see it. And uh, we have our recommendations um, that we're still working on, but generally, if you go on to the next section, our narrative is that this budget is uh, essentially an overall impact of 2.5%, and um, which is starting at the beginning of the year. We do feel that it is a good budget to hit that uh, hit that number and that's what the Board of Selectmen really wanted and they pushed to get down to that number. Uh, so essentially uh, uh, we can go on, you know, we'll go on that, uh, if you go on to the next section. Can I just clarify what you said, the tax impact is going to be two and a half percent. The, the tax the impact, est estimated yes. Estimated tax impact, yeah. But we can go, we go into a little more detail as we're moving, as we're moving on. Um, we do have a couple of concerns that we're still talking about overall, but we're very happy and pleased with the services because of the growth of the town. Um, we, we increased some of the services, especially in the schools, um, that have been growing. So that was a challenge. I think at the beginning of the year it started out at 9.9%, uh, and it was down to six, almost close to 6.5% um, by the time we were able to hit our numbers. 6.6%. Uh, and everyone else, we really tighten things up to get it down to this number. Um, if I can, just give me a second here. Are you looking for a copy of the report? Or? Yeah. You want to use this? This is printed on Tuesday, I think. But with an average impact of uh, two and a half percent, uh, that'll for the average taxpayer uh, for the average house in in Hopkinton, that's a two hundred and sixty dollar increase. 
for a house that might be assessed or valued at five hundred ninety nine thousand five hundred dollars. If you want to talk, you can yes, you can come here, you yeah. can come up here. Yes. I guess I'm the unelected representative of the taxpayers of the community. <laughs> but please uh, just <laughs> Vaskin Bojian, 204 Winter Street. Okay. I Welcome. The, hi. Thank you. Just a couple of questions. What's the six? I heard you say six or six and a half percent, and then I heard you say that two, was just the schools. Percent. I was just giving an example that uh, it, you know it was a tight budget because we have a lot of growth in town this year, or you know there's new growth, but we're also seeing between Legacy Farms and the other communities that there's an increase in the population, increase in the school population. So this year's budget was a challenge, but we were happy to say that the budget is at two and a half percent. The budget tax is at two and a half percent, so the tax impact, impact. impact is two and a half percent higher. All right, if you, give me a, if you give me one second, okay. I, I just want to bring up my slides here that I can give you the numbers. <clears throat> If you're going to a certain page in the report, and you could let us know. Or are you using something else? Yeah. I don't know if you're. I was just having a little trouble. Page, yeah, page. I don't know. Was, were the numbers on page eight updated since um, Tuesday? Numbers on page eight is a memo. <laughs> I was just looking for the overall. Uh, the actual, but overall increase is seven point six three percent. But when you take into account. The new, when you subtract the new growth, um, we kept the we kept it at two and a half percent. The actual levy on the taxpayer would be two and a half percent. What else? What other factors are there? I'm trying to think of that got to to help it get down to that tax impact. New growth. Uh, well, new growth is funding 54 percent of the increased costs. So uh, the, the existing tax base is funding. Uh, you know, 46 percent or less, and the new growth is funding 54 percent of the new tax growth. Those are the those are the two factors. So all the new houses and any new business construction and any new personal property, all that together, is paying more than half of the new costs of town operations in this budget. Which, I mean, you know, people should be aware that that's kind of a bittersweet thing, right? Um, you know, if all that new growth goes away next year, then that means without spending an additional dime in the budget, uh, taxpayers are going to be paying more next year, more than two and a half percent. So I, th I think that's an excellent point. Well, I guess what we don't precisely know yet, because we're not really modeling it, is how much that new growth cost us. Yeah. So we know we didn't build any more jail cells and we didn't... Uh, hadn't yet added to the police department, but we're adding to police and fire and schools. And so we get new revenue for the new growth and we have some new costs. Uh, we don't know if it's 80% of the new growth revenue or 120% of the new growth revenue. We don't, we don't really know that precisely. Mm -hmm. But I think the risk is that um, with the new growth money, we are paying a lot of these bills. So if that money goes away uh, with low growth or no growth, we are still going to have the burden of the bills that we are now supporting. Yep. Right. So that means the there's a risk. Right. right. That's yep. not the baseline. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, that's a good point. I mean, just funding the pay raises that are negotiated in contracts without any new growth would be a challenge. Mm -hmm. Energy costs, which sometimes go up, benefit costs will sometimes go up. Uh, to stay at the two and a half percent and just do those three things would be a challenge. Mm -hmm. I think that's fair to say. Mm -hmm. It's the old structural deficit that we talked about 10, 15 <laughs> years ago. <laughs> I guess, can, can I revise my earlier statement that I didn't have a public comment early on? Okay. Because <clears throat> I'm, I'm, I continue, I spent 11 years on the Appropriation Committee, okay? And it's, but it's been a long, long time since I was on it. I know things have changed dramatically over the years. 
but as a, as a, as a voter and as a taxpayer, uh, I, 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 I get a little lost in the, um, the weeds, okay? And, and I know everybody's doing a good, I'm not saying everybody's not doing a good job. But as a voter and as a taxpayer, I just, I just don't understand how this community in the last five years has increased in value by 33 and a half percent. In 2000, in 2015, we were a, our total assessed value was two billion four hundred ninety-six thousand, and in 2019, it's three hundred three billion three hundred and one million thousand, whatever it is. Okay, but the the, the, the town, the, the value of the town has grown 33.5%. And with that growth, there are a lot more people that are brought in here to pay the tax bills. Okay? And I constantly hear about new growth eating up the 2.5%. And in, 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 in my feeling is, and, and I've watched this for several years, my feeling is, and might be right, more than likely it's not. Um, Mr. Sestari and Mr. Herr have corrected me a number of times on some of my impressions. But we always seem to start off, we seem to think, we seem to cheer if all we go up is 2.5%. I mean, I don't look at the 2.5% as being, being the ultimate goal. I look, I look at, at the taxpayer as best interest as being the ultimate goal. And I'm a little just forgive me because I'm not wasn't prepared to really talk, but I just did from the top of my head did a a quick um, I won't call it analysis a study of a few pieces of real estate that were added to the town over the last five or six years, and quickly came up with a hundred million dollars in value from, from what I found as tax records came up with a hundred million dollars in value. And for that hundred million dollars in value, there was no school, there were no kids. There was no school children, okay? It's uh, 77 West Main Street. I mean, I'm not quite sure what that is. I think that's, um, that's the, um, no, that's that's like the, the, the Dynasty. nursing home, I think. No. It's the, Dynasty. Is that Isn't Dynasty? It? Yeah. yeah. It's Freedom Way. Freedom Way just sold, now, Freedom Way is a two, two, I guess there are two bedroom apartments down there. So there, I'm sure there is some impact of children at Freedom Way. But that was a development that was built six years ago. It was a vacant piece of land that was probably assessed at agricultural value of who knows how low that was. It was developed, turned into a highly successful Madeira, or Moderna, I guess it was called, um, apartments, and then recently sold and from tax records, it sold for $65 million, okay? And it would, but I, I suspect there's a minimal impact on, on um, kids in the school system. And then there's a couple of minor ones. The Starbucks building, $3.5 million. The uh, Dunkin' Donuts on West Main Street. I mean, that's a million three, basically, on two vacant lots, right? And I, I guess as a, as a citizen of the town and as a taxpayer, it just, it just, it, it, it baffles me that our taxes go up as much as they do. And albeit it's not monumental, and, and fortunately for me and some of the people I know, the two or three or four or five hundred bucks a year is not going to put me in the poorhouse. But it's the concept. It's the concept, and I, I, I personally think that it should not be happening. Um, the actual tax bills in that same five years have gone up 9%. The total population growth, and the population growth in the, what I was able to find lags a couple of years behind. I'm not quite sure why that is, but it lags a couple of years behind. The total population growth was 8.5%. I mean, straight line, in, in, and of that 8.5%, I don't think that all everybody in that 8.5% is a school kid that we have to educate for 15,000 bucks a year. It's just, it just baffles me. And, and to date, yeah, um, I, just, I just, I'm not comfortable uh, in, in the numbers. And I think it's, and it's, 
this really is not meant to be disrespectful of anybody that's in this room right now. It's not meant to be disrespectful of the selectmen, and it's certainly not meant to be disrespectful of the, the people that work for us in the town hall during the day in various, I don't know who's who here, okay? Finance, CFOs and, and appropriation committee guy. But it just, it just, in my mind, the math doesn't work. And, and, and I, 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 I'm troubled by it. And, I, and, and now I'm going to, forgive me, but the, the only thing I can say next is a political thing, okay? But it's, it, I'm troubled that we as a, as a community, the, the, the management elected or appointed of this town, I personally believe Don't, don't demand of the town and of the day workers or the people that work for us, we don't work for them, a, a, a better reckoning and to keep this, keep this budget, and this not so much the budget, keep our taxes going up. I mean, in my simple world, I had very successful businesses for many, many years, didn't make a gazillion dollars, made, but made, had enough, I, I live okay. But if there's a 33 and a half percent pure increase in the value of the community, okay, and in, in, in order to create that value, you create a lot more taxpayers, and I suspect some of those people, even though they're taxpayers, aren't even voters in the town, okay, it, it just doesn't work in my head. Now, I'm sure that all the numbers that I can see, I mean, I'm not gonna sit here and check the math and all that kind of stuff. I'm sure it's all right. I mean, it's, it, always, it always has been. Uh, maybe this is the wrong board to be saying that, but on the other hand, I think, I believe, per our charter, right or wrong, that this board has some sort of oversight over the, over the um, the budget pro I mean, I'm not quite sure what the role, the, uh, I know that when I, in the old days, so, we had so a lot of authority. We hear you and, you know, and I know you've been very active in the town and I've talked to you in the past. Yes. And I don't think anyone at this here disagrees with you because we've been, you know, those who've been on the board, whether board of selectmen, we've been going over this probably for the last six or seven years. And, and but um, I know you're saying you're, you don't understand why it still goes up, but we've been debating, we know why, exactly why it goes up, and we have been expressing you know, our concerns every, every year at town meeting. Specifically, you know, a lot of the cost drivers that we have just have three new buildings that we've just completed building, whether it's the Marathon School, the, uh, the DPW, and the library, and you know, they all came online at the same time, and I think within three, you know, within the last three years, those projects have suddenly come online, meaning we now have debt that we're paying off the debt. And I think, you know, we, we did a presentation back in probably 2013 when we were lining up here the different projects, and we showed this slide at town meeting that showed here's the tax, the tax increase that you're going to see. And I think it was an estimate that you just from those projects alone, your, the average cost of the t taxpayer was going to be 10% just from these, these projects, if you did them separately. But because of the, the new growth, and actually it was, last, it was between last year, we don't see any impact this year from the new debt, but last year and the previous budget in two years, we had to absorb those, those three buildings, which would have been 10% if we did not have any new growth or other factors or other efficiencies in. So when you see the, you know, and the new growth was a huge part of it that was able to soften the blow, so to speak. And that's why, even though last year we were able to hold it at 5%, um, it could have been much worse because that's when we had the bulk of all the new debt. So that was the challenging year, was last year. Um, I think it was a 3% increase the year before, 5% uh, last year. But we essentially, but that's increases not just from the impact of the buildings, that's also contractual obligations and just the operational budget in general. So, you know, on the, our report that we have, I do like to show here's the inflation rate. You know, so what, what's the inflate, what, what are things going up just in the community, just in the world around you, um, if there was no other factor that, you know, in terms of contracts, 
paying employees this or the cost of fuel and everything else that's going to be the impact and years before we had the new projects we were actually below the inflation rate the last couple of years we've been above this year we're a little bit above but you know last year was a big hit inflation was a little bit less than three percent our impact was five percent but that was the big hit and we were able to hold it it could have been worse so we all hear you and every year we are still saying boy you know uh, it's real it was really the projects you know and the, and the capital expenses that we were hit with <clears throat> and now we're starting to see the new growth I know you say well the population has an eight percent growth but I think the schools are having an even bigger growth maybe it's the robustness in the real estate market we're always talking about that it's not just legacy farms and the new buildings but it's just a lot of turnover in the neighborhoods mm -hmm. uh, maybe the times are good and people are deciding to either move out of town or, or you know go to a smaller home or they're making changes there so who's moving in new families with new kids going to the schools because the schools in this town have a very good reputation you know they're top rated in the state so it's a it's becoming like a magnet and and which is not necessarily a bad thing. It's great to have good schools. So that's part of the growth, and that's why it, you always are hearing, if you listen to the school committee reports or when they're going to the Board of Selectmen, why the schools, the school growth has been, you know, unprecedented in the last couple of years. I don't know what the population is going from, but it is, it's been a pretty large increase. I yeah, so I mean, no, wants to add actually, on. actually, in some of the stuff that I've been putting together for the last couple of days, um, I'm, I've been going on cleargov.com quite a bit. And the school part <clears> of that, I'd have to say from a, um, my perspective is lacking in that the one, the one piece of data that I was not able to get was the actual growth in the school population over the last five years. The town's part of that cleargov.com website, whatever right. it is, is pretty good. I mean, I, I find there's a lo tremendous amount of information on that. But I think a lot of what you, I, and I hear everything you're saying, and, and, and I agree in most part, but I think if, we, if, the, if the growth in the total value of the community was going up at the same rate as the population was, at the, at the two, three, four, five percent, or eight and a half percent over, over five, four or five years. That, I think, in my mind, I could probably see that math working. But that is not what's happening. The, the value of the town has, has gone up exponentially. It's gone up 33, well, quite a bit, I don't know who sent these numbers. I got these from No, it's a big, it's a big rise, yeah. Town through John Catino. I mean, it's 33 and a half percent. That's yeah, staggering, that, yeah, that, staggering. That, that metric, that metric doesn't entirely transfer oh, over sure. though, to tax rates either, because um, you know, as it was mentioned about you know the strong school system, and of course we do have the new development, but that strong school system has really helped the property values that were already existing. So even even if we didn't have the new development, there's the pie, and the pie may get bigger, but each person's proportion of that pie is the same. So no, it's you know, not because there are more there are there are there are there are more people to pay for the pie. Well, there are now. There, <laughs> there are now. There are more but, people. But if, all that all that thirty three percent that thirty three percent growth isn't entirely due to new. Uh, oh no, of course to, not. To, of course not. I'm you know, new development. <coughs> if I can, so, if I, if I, if I can clarify I a little across, bit, that's what I was saying. I didn't mean that. I, I'm sorry. Even though the value has gone up, it's. All the values have gone up. You have new growth, and then you have the, all the values. You can't suddenly, people aren't getting it taxed more if the whole town goes up 10% in, in value in one year in terms of valuations. We can only raise taxes, can, you know, Prop 2.5 can only go up 2.5%. And nobody, if, if, ta if your values have gone up 10%, people are not going to see a 10% increase in their taxes. That's not how it works. So I know that. it's real. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I just want to make it clear if anyone's no, no, listening. Exactly. And, that's, and then, and then so. the fact of the matter is that, you know, in some of these new developments, um, the number of school children who are coming into town is greater than what was anticipated. Um, you know, and that's, that's great commentary on the school system. Uh, you know, we do have great schools. Um, you know, there were things built into some of the uh, host community agreements, which help out a bit. But... You know, again, those are those are one-time issues too. So, um, 
you know, it's something we have to deal with now. Yeah, can I just point out too, the school budget is, you know, it's about half of the budget these days, a little more than half, but the increases are also in public safety because we have more people. The roads need to be maintained, so a lot of the, public, the DPW's increases because of um, pavement, you know, maintenance. So a lot of things, just the growth I, I, is driving. Yeah, so, and I, yeah. I, I, I clearly understand the, increment, the, the incremental growth in a lot of this stuff. It's just what's... Which gets me off, it catches me off guard. Yeah, is the, is the, the, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at everything, most of the curves I'm looking at are like this, <laughs> and the value of the town is like this, <laughs> and it just it, it, it doesn't make sense. I mean, it's not, I mean, we, 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 if, we, if we increase the town, whatever the to 65,000 people in the last several years, yeah. all 5,000 of them were not kids that we have to educate. So our, our ratio of what we're spending to the value of the town is getting better then. Has to. Right? <laughs> At 33 and a half. Yeah, that, so what are you complaining that, that about? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I just wanted to point out, I think uh, you made a lot of good comments and good uh, points. And thank you for the data. But I think also to look at the data is that how the increase in taxes has been compared to the valuation growth, I think you'll see that as Mike was pointing out, it's not exactly the same rate, of course, by, in, in, by all means. But we do care and understand that, you know, the taxes going up while we are in the, uh, one of the best economic cycle is, uh, is concerning. And the other, other thing, so coming back to that, one thing uh, I w want to point out before I uh, make the other statement is if you look at clear gov for school um, costs, you'll see that per child cost in Hopkinton is, I think, 14,593 something, and which is a median along across the towns in uh, New England. So to Todd's point, I think the spend we have um, increased on school and the other services that uh, Rebecca was mentioning has been tickling because of the um, growth that we are seeing because the growth has been quite a bit over the last few years and last year alone I think we have seen more than 100 new students and we are projecting more than 100 every year coming up. So all these kind of adds to the um, pressure on the services and you'll also see um, if you followed the hearings that every service owner or leaders uh, do feel that pressure and in many ways we also see that um, how do we manage it going forward is going to be also challenging because we are not seeing enough capital investment for us to be prepared for the growth that we are seeing if it goes at this pace. So for example, if the school continues to see this many students every year, we may have to look at new schools or even revamping our existing one which will incur more cost. Uh, so we all discussed about this in many forms and one thing I think we all agree is that we do need a larger scale strategic plan for the town where we can tie these uh, numbers together for the present as well as going forward how, how it's going to look like. We seem to, and for good reasons, address a lot of the urgent needs and address a lot of immediate um, investments, but we often don't have that full view of the future together. So comprehensive I think planning, analysis, and then kind of strategic planning for the, uh, all the services, combining with the growth and managing the growth, I think would be key. Um, and certainly, looking at the taxes, we want to make sure that we have the fiscal oversight on all the services, as you'll see through the hearings and through our commentaries. Uh, but it, it is a growth and um, a lot of the pent-up demand that we haven't done for a long time added to, to all of these equations. Well, I, I guess one of the things, I, un, I understand the growth, and I can do the math. I mean, I've got given time to look at the, all the paper. I can do the math. I, 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 I clearly understand. It is growth. But it's also, but in my mind, it's, it, it, it's also our, our, um, our willingness to, to, I guess, it, I, I don't know what the terminology is, not at least philosophically, Talk about zero-based budgeting or something like that. In other words, it, it's it, we 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 always address our budget 
We have done it. Every, I've been here 40 something years, 42 years. We've always addressed our budget as, as we did last year. Okay, what, how much more are we going to do this year? And then the first pass is 10%, and the selectmen raise, jump up and down, and 10% goes down to, to 6 or 7 or 8%. And then the appropriation committee beats on them a little bit more, and it's down to 4 or 5 or 6%. I understand that, but there's, there's, I just think there's, there's, we haven't to this to date, we haven't as a community at least come to the point of uh, really grabbing the bull by the horns and managing the the zero based budgeting, is the lack of better terms, concept, and just keeping on at keeping we keep adding on to what we already have. Okay. I mean, and, and I, I, I come into town hall once in a while. I used to come in a lot more than I do now. We have, we have an, an incredibly good workforce here. We have incredibly good people. There isn't a person in this town hall that I would say is not working hard and doesn't do a very good job on the one hand. But on the other hand, I never hear, and we've got title after title after title and assistant this and all that kind of stuff. But on the other hand, I never hear, I never hear the, 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 us taking the, 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 the position of do we really need them all? In other words, if, if somebody can be doing an excellent job at his job or her job, okay, and will continue to do it forever, okay, but no one's ever taken a look at does that job, do we really <coughs> need that job in this town? Or do we need? Do we need it? And I don't think that's what's. I. I don't. And I don't think it's the role of the appropriation. Yeah. Right. But, but I would. I, I, don't I would argue. I don't think they're doing that. Yeah. I would argue against that point. Also, um, you know, I was on the board of select for were. nine years, and for the first, I want to say, for the first uh, four, maybe five years, we had a hiring freeze. Anytime there was a new opening, whether it was <coughs> through attrition or the town manager uh, asking for a new hire. Uh, it had to come through on an individual basis with the Board of Selectmen so that we could review it. In my first, I think it was seven years on the board, um, overall town hall, town hall, <laughs> I'm not looking for things. <laughs> I know you're not. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, I think overall the town side of the government um, headcount increased, I think it was by four people, you know, something, something really small like that. Um, which as the town was growing and that was a, a big growth period not as quick as it is right now um, you know I think that that was that was I'd say reasonable but beyond reasonable uh, you know for what we were offering and um, so we've been through we've been through various phases and I, I'm I'm tight with my pennies um, and I don't like to see taxes go up and you know you can talk to Tim and Dave and Ben and you know from our conversations I'm always wondering you know why do we have this in the budget you know is that necessary you know can't we represent things a little bit differently you know just to kind of bring more transparency to taxpayers so that they're making informed decisions um, but you know in, in the years that I've been involved in the budget First of all, I will say that as much as I want to get taxes even lower, the budgets that we passed, I almost feel guilty because I feel things, you know, whether it's departments or uh, facilities are getting cheated. Um, and in the first few years that I was on, it was right after the 08 crash, everybody knew that, you know, times were gonna be tough for people. And so we really, you know, pinched the pennies hard and we saw uh, maintenance on buildings start to suffer. And, you know, since then, you know, we've had a number of times where, you know, we start looking at things and we say, all right, you know, is this what we want to do again? Or do we want to make sure that we're, you know, putting this money into facilities? Or, you know, maybe it's roads, maybe it's a building, you know, and maybe it's services. And, uh, you know, we can't, in, in times like this when the economy is strong, it's difficult with good conscience to start ignoring some things like that. And then it's compounded when we have the, the incredible growth that we've had in town, uh, both in population um, and you know, just, just 
the programs that are required to serve that population. So I, I, I totally understand, you know, when you look at numbers like this, it's easy to look and, and get frustrated. Um, and, you know, but it's some, somewhat the cost of doing business, you know, and, and if you want to be in a town where the values are, uh, you know, staying high, while well, a lot of other communities, the values are not going up, you know, they're going down. You know, sometimes, you know, these costs are necessary. Um, and I can assure you that at least I'm, I'm looking at things with, with what I think is a keen eye and, and trying to keep things down and reasonable. Uh, I know that the different board members that I've had the pleasure to work with, you know, both on this board and the Board of Selectmen, um, I feel pretty safe in saying that every one of them, you know, had, had the same attitude. Um, and you know it's just it's, it's a, when when you have this growth it's difficult to keep everything down it's the bottom line okay thank you all right thank you thank you thank you i'm done for now are you, are you done for now <laughs> maybe forever <laughs> Well, you know, so I, 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 I said that. And I guess, I guess, I, I said that, and then at the other hand, tongue in cheek, I think about it. You know, um, uh, I think the fact that the room that we're in right now is empty. We have one citizen here. I mean, you're all citizens. Many of you, if not all of you, live in town and pay taxes in town. So, I mean, it is indicative that, in general. I have to believe that the people outside there that write the checks, if they're not, if, if they, 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 by their silence, mm -hmm. they're certainly putting their stamp of approval on, on everything or most of what, what we're saying. Mm -hmm. And if they're not women, if they're not doing that and they're silent, too bad. Yeah. I feel mm -hmm. bad for them. And you're, you're they speak up to me, they complain to me from time to time because they know in the past I've gotten up and spoken and I've said things like that. And I look at them and say, you guys can do the same thing. And it will change. If you, if you want something to change, come, don't, when, I, when, I, when, I, when I'm at one of those meetings and I'm sitting there and I, and I turn around and look and there isn't a damn one of you behind me, I said, you're not gonna see any change. You're only gonna see change if you show up. Yeah. And you're yeah. and you're at you know annual town meeting every year, I, and you see and you see that and you see that you know most often when there are these articles that are coming up to spend more money, there are a lot of people in there that make sure they come to make sure that the town is spending money on this project, that piece of land, or that building. So you know this this ends up being the mm -hmm. result too. Yeah, yeah. And, and on that note, we have been. The budget has passed yeah. unanimously. Or I know, <laughs> right, right. Which is quite yeah. Yeah. Well, that's why, in, in, in again, from, from the past, and I'm sure it continues to happen, uh, my, my comments to a lot of people was many, many years ago, was that I, being on the appropriation committee, I had the opportunity to vote twice on everything. <laughs> and, and the first vote was when, when the budget, in fact, then the budget process was different. People came directly to the Appropriation Committee and, and we worked it, we had nine members. We worked, but I mean, we worked it and worked it and worked it and we worked it out and then we went to town meeting and we got to vote on it, we got to vote on it a, sec a second time. Right. And, so. and, and you probably know that from appropriation side, we do the due diligence, but we don't make the policies. And we try to make things aware so citizens can take their decisions. So you'll see in the last few, um, as Rebecca was mentioning, we have presented many of the um, impact of the decisions, capital decisions, how it's going to impact the taxes, how it's oh, yeah, going to impact the overall. And, you know, our intent is to make everyone take an educated decision uh, and the educated vote. And that's how I think it is also part of the citizens that you were mentioning uh, to take more part in this process and engage and understand and then open up. So thank you for coming forward. Certainly, it's a how, how often how often have you seen these articles come out and they pass, but when they start doing the the hand count and having people stand up, you see most of the people on stage <laughs> disagreeing oh, with I the know. people in the I've audience. Got it, I've got it. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And, and and something I learned in high school, which was unfortunately many many years ago, was about our democratic republic. 
that we have in the su supposed rule of the majority. Well, as it turns out, and Hoffington is a prime example of that, the town is really ruled by a very small minority, and we all hope that they have the majority in mind when they're voting at town meeting, because there's usually 150 or 200 people in town meeting mm -hmm. in a town that has 16,500 people. And that sounds to me like we're being, we're being ruled by the minority. Mm -hmm. Thank God that in most cases they have the, the rest of us in mind when they're doing it. And the, and the majority support them through inaction. Yeah, right. Yes. There's no other way to say it. I think engagement is a challenge, but. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I love having my own. I love having my own my own private public hearing. Here. This is. Maybe, this is I, hope I, I hope I don't get too used to this. This is better. Is there any room for a This is better television than our last huh? meeting. When this what? is better television than our last meeting when we would have oh, five minutes of silence. Yeah, I keep forgetting. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. All right. Thank but, you very much. But you are you're you absolutely correct. When the Thank budget you. seems everyone seems satisfied with the budget, we'll be very quiet. At, at the Appropriation okay. Committee uh, public hearings. So I think you're the first person to show yeah. up in two years. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of good questions. Thank you for that. Yes, and thank you. stirring up thoughts, certainly. All right, thank you. Thank you. Um, do you want us to go through, I mean, I don't know we're, we're, we weren't no. really prepared no, to go through the whole leave, budget. Okay. We're, we're always open for questions, because uh, when we close the meeting, we'll go off and continue with yeah, our business. I, yeah, so. I wasn't, yeah, but with, with the amount of work that I know goes in preparing the budget and f from, from the town manager to all the departments and all that, and by the time it gets to you guys and yep. you've looked at it two or three times, I, I, there's no need to nickel and dime or, or question any of that stuff. I did. Philosophically, I wanted to hear it, and I'm hearing it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So can we close the uh, public hearing at this oh, point? Oh, God. I was the full public hearing. We need a motion. <laughs> Thank you. I move to close the public hearing. I will second. All, right. All those in favor of closing public hearing, say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. 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 All right. <laughs> Thank you. So now we're off to the next piece on our agenda, which is, uh, I, as we're, as I was told today, that. Uh, I guess 10 days before 14 town meeting, days 14 before, days before the public uh, before the town meeting is the appropriations committee report deadline so we've been talking when we scheduled the series of seven meetings we talked about finishing the report to submit it in a timely manner so it could be submitted in a timely manner now, I don't think there's penalties for not meeting the deadline but I I sense that you would want to meet the deadline so our deadline is on charter it's one Monday. Monday. So we have scheduled another meeting in case you want to meet Monday to approve the appropriations report. But uh, there's also the opportunity to review, edit, and approve the appropriations report tonight. Uh, so it's really how you want to attack it. And the two things we really want to do tonight is uh, either approve or make progress on the final draft of the appropriations report and we want to go through some of the warrant articles which are now numbered yep. and you can get some voting done on some of those articles so I think in either order is there you have a sense of a preference on the order does it does it matter uh, no I it, it's certainly up to the, the committee to start to take positions on either item can I back up one thing you said there's a meeting scheduled on Monday in, in case you need it because it's we not, just so you know it's not posted on the calendar the town calendar i just checked and i don't know about it so okay well then oh, so posted it this afternoon today. okay, it, okay. And it was posted with the uh, town clerk and it, it was posted, it was posted. Okay. so, so it, then it has to get on. yeah so it's yeah. in the okay. book so as long as it's posted it's in the book and it's stamped and uh, <clears> it'll be on the town calendar. Not a, uh, not a it's not a holiday no it's not yeah. only on wall street <laughs> one of the two days a year they close mm -hmm. okay so I do think we should do another one over go over the uh, report great just to make I think uh, um, I think that would just be a good idea just you know we, we can spend all night on just the uh, uh, Warren articles and then we'll definitely be here Monday right so I've shared that there's an electronic copy of that report, the draft report. I think everybody has it. 
mm -hmm. and it's uh, Mike's machine will be up on the screen. Does I think it that's it, Mike's oh, machine or Ben's? Yep. Ben's machine is on the screen. So is this the one dated? I just shared 10? it with you. Yeah, again, because oh, I saw you didn't. You didn't. Uh, did you share? Oh, there we go. I just shared it with you. And do you, uh, Todd, I know you're on it because you've got, you've been commenting. Yep. Does everybody have it up? Yeah. We're still working out that same copy. Right. Yeah. It's that. That's the beauty of Google Docs, and actually, it's perfect for this venue because uh, you can look at, we can talk and change words live in front of all of us here. <laughs> so it's like, uh, what was that tool we had that uh, back in the 90s, collaboration tools. So it's like that. Is this information that's in here on the uh, police department and fire department calls, is that new or did can I Can you tell me what page you're on? Uh, 27. 27. 26, 27. I'm getting there. I believe that was the uh, the presentations that they both made. So, at, at yeah. The public. So we we uh, had the narrative in an earlier draft, and the town manager uh, thought that the narrative that had evolved looked like it was written by a lot of different people. There were different structures. There was different emphasis. There were different sequence. And his direction was to come up with something that had a common look and feel in a common level of detail. So we have gone through all that narrative and tried to normalize it to, to each other. Mm -hmm. And so the content is uh, the same or similar. And what you see there in the yellow highlights throughout that section starting on page, I think, uh, 20, starting on page 26, those are performance metrics, and you know it's been one of our objectives to try to present performance information together with financial information to describe the value proposition of the town. So again, this is your report. So those are proposed performance metrics, and if you wanted to pass it tonight uh, and you like those performance metrics, we would then populate them. And if the committee decides you don't want performance metrics in there, we will probably produce something like a popular report that's a much condensed version of this uh, after the town meeting and we will use those performance metrics in a different way. It's what the people call a PAFR and they're getting more, I think I shared examples of PAFRs with you. So to get, try to get a sense of some of the performance and value issues, those are recommendations. And if you, if, if you like them, we'll populate them with the data and maybe modify a few of them if the data is not available. If you think it's not right for this product, we will take them out because it's your report. Which yeah. page is it on? I don't see it on 26. If you start on 20, 25, you know, I'm looking at the right, the actual pagination and the numbers are different. So the numbered page 25 and 26. The one that says percentage change, is that? Uh, I, I think you may be in a different, oh, different version. Let me share it with you again. This I'll just Can you share it with Mike as well? I I I will. I'll yeah. do it again. But which which them? email address, Mike, do you want me to yeah, use sure. to share it with you? Okay, I don't know if I have that. Let's see. Actually my email too. I think I don't have like this is embarrassing. Can somebody grant me access? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm delighted well, to. No, what happened is my daughter did something on my PC and it's coming up with her email address and I can't That's okay. I that think I know that address. Was that the uh, what's her first name? <laughs> Allison is a is lazy potato. Allison, yeah, she's in my address. global. She's 12 years old. My wife is going to say who is Allison is a lazy potato? Why is she in I apologize. I'm, no, it's okay. Uh, and Mike very but cool. I, I only have your, I don't have a Gmail address for you, Mike, other than, uh, so well, is it chair? The F chair. Uh, you got to give me more actual. App, app. App. App chair. App chair. Got it. At hoppingtonma.gov. Okay. Okay, you're sharing with people outside the suite. Yeah, this is a little awkward getting it going. Thank you, sir. Thank you. This is a little awkward getting it going, but I think once we're all on this same We can make that too if you want to scroll to that. Correct, yes. Once we're on the same uh, file. So can I just point out that we probably should only be doing this while we're all together because 
do we run into issues with open meeting law if we're sequentially modifying this? I don't, I don't know. Um, well, we can only do it during this meeting. During this meeting, yeah, okay. exactly. Yeah. Great. Uh, so that you'll see those sections in yellow right there. Oh, yeah. So, uh, and those are sample performance metrics, the kind of things that talk about value, like the number of municipal employees per capita. So that's the kind of thing when you start benchmarking with other towns. How, how many employees do other towns of 18,000 have? Uh, you know, right. and, and I love you know, the numbers, these so metrics. Uh, One thing quickly I wanted to also add. Um, do we have access to cleargov.com? Yes, everyone does. Mm -hmm. Like the appropriation members? or Every citizen. Yeah, it's a, it's a public, publicly can available open website. No, it is, but uh, then I wanted to drill down to some of the data and uh, they told me that it's only access to the town administration and asked me to contact you or Josh. Okay, well we would absolutely, anybody, give anybody any of the data that populates any of the tables. I mean, I don't know if there's some point where some of the data is editable and that's why they do it. I don't know why, but everything is available. So we can give you anything you need. I'll remind you, but um, that'll be helpful. Because I think the, the clear metrics comes out uh, in public, but when I wanted to look at some of the one layer down data, that's where I think we need that access. So, so in the previous narrative, uh, for example, the library included a large number of metrics in a narrative form. DPW put some lists of metrics. The fire department had tables. Everybody was presenting metrics in a different place in a different way. And this is really an attempt to get the section that talks about for every department what they do, how you measure their effectiveness, and then what the significant budget impacts is. So it drives everybody that that same kind of uh, a look. And uh, so, so, so I'd just like to make a comment more directly to the content here that's in yellow that could be filled out or Great. whatever. Um, I think I think. A lot of it um, that just doesn't belong in the appropriations report. Okay. Um, subscribers and followers on social media, number of citizens on boards and committees. Um, I don't know. As far as as far as appro the appropriations committee is concerned, I think some of this is interesting. Could be interesting to people. But I don't think it has anything to do with us. I think there can be an argument made for some of the things when we start drilling down into uh, you know police department and fire department as you were mentioning, kind of getting an idea of the metrics and what people are getting for their money. Um, but I think that even that, uh, in, in some of the context that you were putting in, it, it only has value if we see, you know, what are other communities right. doing, you know, and what are they like? And we don't have that information, nor do I think we should necessarily be putting all of that in there. Some there of the stuff in here I think is good, you know, some of the, the bond rating and, you know, the, the rates of return and things like that. That's fiscal, and I think that's more pertinent to us. Uh, but I think a lot of the other stuff can probably be dropped. And there's that's the annual my... report no, that I feel is more appropriate. Point. But I was thinking this is probably the only, or uh, I haven't seen enough probably, that could be too, where you can see kind of the state of the town. Well, I think, that that's, I think that that's report. more appropriate for the town like report. Yeah, the annual yeah. report. Yeah. I think yeah. this would be great. Well, if that's the feeling of the, uh, the committee, we are much closer to an excellent finished product. We're saying that's to fill all this stuff in now. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, we're going to do it because we want to present, the town wants to present this uh, perspective to the taxpayers. Yeah. And uh, we will do it in a different form, yeah. which is great. Yeah. So and I think that it should be under consideration next year for the annual town report um, right. that's all bound. But I know that's probably, it's much too late for that now. Right. So I just want to just run back to something it said, um, Rebecca, is for the open meeting law, you can make comments to the finance team um, or questions, but you can't um, have anything that could not constitute a debate. Um, so you could review the report give us comments or questions that we can respond to, but right. it can't be as a group. My so concern I just want to make that Google clarification. Doc where you can see comments, so if we all go home and start, the, the five of us start making comments, everyone can see those, so that's not just going to you guys. It's, a, it's an excellent point. We hadn't, yeah. we hadn't had two members simultaneously on and commenting on each other's, so we did not run afoul of that. Yeah, oh, no, we I don't think we have. We could have, have. No, we could have, so it's great that you pointed that out. Should agree to not put any more comments. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. 
So if the group wants to take the yellow performance stuff out, we will do that, and then that really streamlines the rest of the report. You, if, if you may want to focus on the message at the beginning, or you, there may be numbers you want to validate, but you may be in a position to vote for this report tonight if we're going to do that. I'm sorry. I do want to kind of review those. I don't have it in front of me. I looked at it, and I agree. There are some that um, uh, comes out as, you know, that can be moved to somewhere else, like uh, the annual report. But uh, I'll probably need a little time to process the rest. I like some of the ones that are related to the town growth or um, financials in directly or indirectly. So can I have some time to review that? So need on Monday to um, finalize? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. Um, so while, yeah, while we're thinking on that, uh, another point I wanted to kind of check out, Tim, is uh, there are few graphs that showing the the debt, debt. yes, the debt picture tapering down. Yes. Now I thought about it, and I like the charts, but what I'm thinking is, what is the message we are giving, and is this the accurate message that we want the town to think that way? So looking at this, the message seems to be, you know. We are doing great because the debt is going to go down continuously, and in five years you'll be almost zero debt or zero, you know, de uh, debt exclusion, interest payment. Right. But is that realistic? And S do we want to send that message? So I, I uh, thank you for asking that question. I think the representation is realistic because we made the change that Todd suggested that uh, really none of us had the history on. So it was my perception that the normal debt level and the general fund, and I'm now looking at page uh, 19, which is really the money chart, all, all the money's there. Uh, so my perception was that normal was eight million and that we were gonna tail down to four and then we'd be looking at recapitalization. And when we went back as we were asked to, it showed that normal might be five, might be six, might be four, uh, and that we have a long debt stream. And, and really those three lines would show you, the first one is the debt that exists, the middle one that's lighter, that's above it, shows you what the town has already committed to at previous town meetings, but has not incurred the debt for. And then that dotted line above it is the fire truck and the and the sidewalks and the other few things we're going to do, what we're asking people to commit to now. So this is really a valuable, uh, probably the most valuable new thing in the, in the tool <coughs> now that we've extended it backward and showed what something like normal is. Uh, I think the other ones later, it's accurate. Some of those debts go away in a few years and I think that's worth knowing. But it's, l it's less money but we want it to be consistent in the presentation of the data if we were going to do it for the big pot of money. What, what did it come out? I know you, you said something at the very beginning. Um, what did it come out as far as what the standard is? You know, what the so there, is? there's, you know, we didn't find a standard and we didn't, we were going to draw a dotted line there for what the, the norm or the standard was and we couldn't find a authoritative standard and we didn't want to we didn't want to cook it like a percentage standard. So I think if you that. I think if you talk to uh, the town manager um, over the last over the last few years, the board of selectmen has talked about what we wanted to target for that, right. and uh, he may have record of that. Okay, I, we'll, we'll ask him. We'll ask him about that. Yeah. But so, go ahead. Also, based on this chart, as we you know, it's a theme we have talked about over and over is that with the the high school coming off that right. we also have the MSBA to counter yes. the debt. Yes. So you can see between, look at the drop between fiscal year 21 and 22. That That's like, you see the slope is right. pretty big and that's the high school itself, but we're not taking into account the MSBA right. um, contribution. So, so we haven't it, cracked it, the nut on how to represent that, you know, maybe a representation net of that, that subsidy and it would lower the whole line you know, it would change the shape and lower that line a little bit. Uh, we haven't done that. Where, so. where does Marathon School fall into this? I, I would have to say it's that peak at 19. We'll see the difference between 
fiscal year 16 to 19. Yeah. Is that the or big three? That's, that's the three projects. That's what I was talking about. Right. That was the hit, that suddenly our debt service went from five million, peaks, yeah. five million to nine million in like three years in terms of debt service. And that's where the new growth really eased the pain quite a bit to the taxpayer. <clears throat> So one thing, uh, and I know I've mentioned it before we saw this report, I mentioned it in the middle of the report, and I'm going to mention it again, see if maybe I can get what I want at some point. You, whether it's in this report or whether it's in a uh, presentation that, that Mike does before town meeting, I would still like to see some, it's probably a set of maybe two to three graphics, um, but something that represents the property values and you know, three to four uh, groupings so, of so property values. We, we did that today. Uh, we, we did exactly what you asked for, and we did a magnificent, uh, not, we did a great job of putting it, it out. And, and what it, <laughs> what it was was the most boring, uninformative chart. Yeah. So the idea was excellent, and I think maybe Ben can, can share it with everybody or bring it up. All it showed was th three parallel lines with very low slopes that you couldn't visibly discern yeah. anything from. Yeah. So what it showed you was for a $300,000 house, a $600,000 and a $900,000 house, how the value and tax rate rose. And they basically looked three lines that looked like that. Pretty, pretty and parallel. There was no jumps, there was no spikes, they were high, very parallel. Yeah. It was. It looked like the Adidas. Uh, well, that tells a story too. But right? that was a little, you used, maybe <laughs> yeah. used the wrong um, chart used a line chart, but maybe if it was just a bar graph, you can show how the value that you oh, show, the actual that amounts you show here's the increase in it, here's the increase in values. And yeah, know, they were all the same. What it's gonna show is parallel. You could do it numerically, you could do it with stack bars, you can do it with lines. It, but you're welcome to take a look at it. Ben will yeah, share I mean, it with I, everybody. I'd love, I'd love to, and, and I'm in not fact, Ben, share it with everybody right now if you can bring it up. Yeah, just bear with I'm not questioning what you're saying, but I'd yeah. love to see the actual numbers you, you, behind it because yes. when it comes to this stuff, you know, even if one is you know a quarter of a percent or a half percent more than another grouping, right. that's significant because you know, I mean, here it is. You know, we're talking about 2.5 percent increase versus 2.66 percent right. increase. And oh no, we got to get it down to 2.5. Well, you know, so now you're looking at some people that, yeah, maybe if they're in this one bracket and all of a sudden so, they see. So that would almost be a compelling argument if it wasn't the fact that each of these is a point estimate and there's variation among the pool of $300,000 houses. So even from there, this, this whole thing becomes a cone and of data. And that's, yeah, and that's yeah. why in my mind I was thinking you take that, that sub pooling and you get an average out of that. Of right, and, but then when you average it, this is what you get. Can you scroll yeah, so it, Ben? It's, um, it's show up here. So, oops. Can you scroll so the chart shows? Scroll. There you go. Down. That's what the chart looks like. Oh, see. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so, and and this is where I think your your point is really well taken. That we're trying to aggregate the the data more, and that there's going to be a particular house that's going to change more drastically in value than when you mm -hmm. aggregate it. I think it's more challenging to uh, extrapolate it over the rest of the population. Because yep. you can see here that, the, you know, if we took, and this came from the assessors, that if you took a $300,000 home and a $600,000 home in 2015, they both increased about 6%. You can see it's a, it's a, it, it's a what similar you get is line. We had like four it, layers of regression to the mean here. Mm -hmm. So what we got was lines that were parallel in the, the the disparity that you were interested in analyzing disappeared through the aggregation yeah. as we regressed to the mean in each of the components. And I, I thought it was possible that either the more expensive houses or the least expensive houses would have a different experience with value growth. Yeah. But in individual houses certainly do, mm -hmm. but when you aggregate them all, it was pretty, okay. it, it's pretty, uh, yeah. So we, we had meant to bring That's that up and show it to you. It was good. good we looked at it, and it was, it was good. We thought we'd get something striking, yeah. and it was uh, no, like a layer cake. I mean, nobody, nobody can you know, feel cheated in any way, yeah, whether and justified it, or not. And that is, th that is actually a value to that slide, I think. Right. But do, do we have any, and maybe it's any, I just missed it. What is the 
what has the average value of a house in Hopkinton done over this period? So, uh, because I wonder how many. I, so, of those four, three or four groupings, where are we seeing more houses come in? Like, where's the growth in town? The new houses. So that's data we have to... So I, I have a data table that I stratified after one of our first meetings and Todd raised it and I looked at how many houses were in each $100,000 band yeah. and then I looked at what the assessment growth was for a year looking to see if there was an exorbitant growth in one or the other and there was a, a hair of variation around the $800,000 houses which seems to be kind of the sweet spot right now it's it's just for for a number of reasons for the, I think the value point maybe it sounds absurd to say that's a value point but that really is the value point where you get quite a bit more house for not much more money and and uh, yeah. and then it tails off after that so there was a little spike there but otherwise it was pretty and on the very low end because the floor tends to rise right so there just aren't any more two hundred thousand dollar houses right. So that, that bottom end comes up. Uh, yeah, I'm not saying that's a slide for the meat. I just think as you, right. I mean, to, Bogey, to, to Bogey's point about some of the, maybe the new ways we should be looking at, at these numbers, but certainly not for this, this cycle. Yeah. No, absolutely. And I think this is a good chart. Um, it kind of makes the point that we are all saying that the valuation is not proportional or the tax is not proportional to the valuation, right? So certainly shows that. And um, I'm sorry, I'll go back to the previous question about capital funds and debt. Uh, just to make sure, in the forecast, have we included any forecast or um, actual numbers for the capital fund that we year to year have to, the capital from the capital articles that we have to um, fund for? For example, this year I think it's 1.4, last year it was 1 million, right? So in this chart, how much is it projected for next year and the, say, next three years? So that's an estimate for next year is not included. So what's what the dotted line here is what's proposed for this coming town meeting. Um, I, I think part of the, the value in this chart, your point is very well taken, that we can use this to analyze maybe this is the time for a new fire station or a new school or whatever that might be. So that, that's part of the value of the tool, but we can also certainly work in some assumptions to show what that might look like in a, in a visual form as well. Right, gotcha. Yeah, so it doesn't include some of these known recurring capital expenses, so to speak. Uh, uh, beyond what's proposed. Beyond what's proposed, correct. yeah, that's what I thought. So maybe we can, in the narrative or somewhere, we can explain that. Okay, so again, I, I want to make sure that directional you know, kind of representation of the information is well understood. That this is not, you know, this is uh, based on the, uh, as you just said, uh, exact current state of things and that we know of. Right. But what we anticipate happening, whether it be new fire station or, you know, ex expansion or more work for Elmwood School and such and such, those are, those are not, of course, included. And nor is the yearly year-to-year -year capital expenses that we see coming every year. It's not a surprise. I mean, we, we can pretty much anticipate that next year also we'll see some of that is not also included. So, right? so that's all, and the opportunity to do that is the area to the right and above the dashed line, right? And the question is whether your ceiling for that line is up higher or down lower. And so if you're, and I'm, I'm pointing to the wall instead of looking at the version, because I, I just sent you a different file. Uh, so if you, if you look at this and your, your ceiling is six million, and what you really think it is is six million, uh, we don't have an opportunity to build another school till 2025. And, but if you think it's eight million, we probably have an opportunity to build the school in, 2022, and 2023, and that's, and that's the and discussion. That's assuming, that's assuming no other capital articles pass between now and then. Right, because that dashed line is going to add every year. Right. That's what we <laughs> learned by adding those two lines. We were we were getting ready to report the solid line, and we thought, yeah. wait a minute, this there are decisions in this document. There are decisions that have been made. So so there will be that layer, that normal layer every year of the new fire truck and the new. No, I mean this this almost begs the town to consider 
if there's going to be a new fire station or if there's going to be a new school to smooth it out because I feel like we go through these growth spurts mm -hmm. um, and then we built so we built the, the new police station the and the fire station and like one of the schools all at once and then we stopped for a while and then with the library and the DPW. So, so it, you know, you are selling the commercial for long-term capital planning. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And which, which we should be looking at a couple things. What is the state of our infrastructure? What's our deferred maintenance? Because you don't want to defer to the point that you double your costs. Right. And then what's your recapitalization? And, and is that next thing you want really the most important thing? Right. And then the, to do that prioritization. And again, last meeting we talked about excluded debt being the likely path. If we're going to stay at 2.5%, growth slows, and we have contractual obligations to give pay raises, the math makes it kind of hard to think there's going to be headroom within the tax levy limit. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So so these things, we're, we're going to have to be looking at excluded debt, which is the preferred method for the town. And and I think you summarized plan. it well, certainly. Summarized it well, and that's the, I think, theme that we have been hearing and saying again and again that we need long-term capital planning long -term yes that's why I'm here connected strategic that's, planning. Yeah. And that's something that we had a committee pulled together how, how many years ago was that six ten years ago I think we did in 10 or 11 that I think year. it was 2012 yeah. I saw the plan yeah. and yeah. Yeah. it was some so great work but we really need we haven't maintained it and we, we haven't yeah. moved forward that was we, more existing yes we need so we need less continuously mm -hmm. Uh, less than that intensiveness continuously because right. it's always going to change, right? Exactly. Going out, new things are going to happen, new new challenges are going to emerge. Mm -hmm. So we need to be less precise, but still robust, yeah. and and be agile, right? And, and really at scope each, it out. At each year at town meeting, we should be able to incorporate that plan into this into yeah. this. Chart. I, I'd like to see a roving red block, yeah. you know, across that graph that shows the new school, if there's a new fire station, if there's a recapitalization of a fleet of vehicles somewhere, wh whatever a major, yeah. major things are, and, and start to yeah. plan that out. So there, there's great, you heard the fire chief come in and talk about his planning, DPW does planning, the schools do planning, we don't have an integrated town planning approach, yeah. Yeah. and we need that. Right. That's actually what we did in 2013, the famous uh, Ron Eldridge slide. Yeah. yeah, and it just showed with because we predicted the three big buildings. Right, and, and you were right. Impact and it went, and all of a sudden the selectmen like, why are you putting that up? Don't there? put that up. Okay. And um, you know, so it, that's but that's really uh, important information. But you had the other things. You know, when we saw, as you can see, when we're working the budgets, as we have these big increases on like the debt in the last two years, we really had to push back on other things to, yes. to kind of lessen the blow. So even that's why the slide, even though it's very honest that here's the cost of each capital project, that it gets kind of scary because we always find other ways that, all right, we can't get, we can't do, we can't have initiatives in other areas during those years or we can't do more turf fields those years. So, but it's not like we're beating our diet rules in managing to stay overweight. Yeah. We are actually getting things done by do, by being creative and agile. So we're getting good things done. We're expanding the sidewalks this year. We are adding that ladder truck. It's it's not like we're doing being innovative to stay fat and to stay excessive. We are. I, I think the town government's doing a very good job, and I take no credit for it because I just got here, but uh, is doing a very good job about rising to the challenge and fine-tuning that prioritization in the near term. I do, I do think there's a good, I want to kind of move on. Okay. We can, we can talk about this all day, but I do, I do think that because we had the three projects coming online at once, this, the spike that you see at the top, we right. don't want to say, well, as long as we're, we stay at that top, we're, we're okay. Right. That was a very painful top, and we want to we want to be a little below that, just because right. all the three projects came online at the same time, so they didn't have a, there was no smoothing previously to get up to that point, and we needed to come down. Got it. And I don't want to digress and get, get us off track, but you, there's a lot of interest in the housing stratification. I just shared that file with you. If you if you just want to glance at it or not, you can glance at it some other Before time. Before we leave the charts, in the AC report last year, we had a little bit of an explanation under each one. Each one, it wasn't just a chart put out there um, that kind of explained what was going on. And I do think that's very helpful, and it takes a lot of work. I apologize. It was Pam doing it all last year, but um, I don't know if if we want to. 
include that? Um, yeah, those those yeah, charts. All were, of the charts. So the like the one we just looked at. If you look at last year's report, there was a little blurb that said, you know, this is going up or going down because of. Let me let me find that one. Well, those charts are actually new this year. So the ones last year had, I have the, I have last Similar, year's report yeah, right yeah. in front of me, and, and there was you know a sentence or less. So the one that we were kind of looking at, which is more of a bar chart. Um, okay, and I was looking at. Uh, there's another one, what page are on 11? Um, this one. So very similar, just kind of a different format. But we said, you know, the large decrease in debt service reflects the high school being paid off. It should be noted there'll right. also be a decrease from the MSBA. So we had, we had a dialogue, you know, yeah. which I think is helpful because I don't know that if you just look at this chart, I don't know if the average taxpayer is going to understand it. So okay. being able to Well, go step one was to see if you like the chart. And uh, we cut. Do, is it too repetitive to have both of the charts in there, even though it's kind of saying the same thing, but from a different perspective? The bar chart and the Yeah, the bar chart. The so the bar chart, chart was really a short it term. Was, it only it was a much, yeah, it was very short. And um, it looked, it looked yeah. back and it went to 2023. You can take this so it really doesn't uh, give you the, the story we're trying to tell. But I think that, you know, because we really, based on the conversation we're having right now, that that kind of bar chart still holds too, and I think it's just another perspective to put on it to show in the short term, here's the spike, and we kind of want to get that spike okay. down again yeah. well, before we consider. So the same data is represented there, except that's a 40-year picture instead of a five-year picture. If you would 40, like to... 40 years doesn't tell us a whole lot just because we're going to do a lot of New, new maintenance yeah. and buildings right. in the next 40 years. Right. So Yeah, I guess that's what I see is that opportunity is the area to the right and above the dash line. Right. And, and uh, But I built the chart, so I understand it. So maybe it's, <laughs> maybe it's not as clear. So do you want the old chart and you want narrative? Is it worth doing both or? So we're moving toward a Monday meeting then because yeah. we, yeah. we can't I, do this on the fly. I think my narrative would be helpful. Yeah. Okay. Only because not everything is, you know, right. as clear as we say and talk about it. And we we've, we've been looking at this and we understand. Right. It, yeah, but, we understand. Because um, yeah, I mean, we had we and probably we can cut and paste a lot of the text that was already in there. Just update certainly. the numbers. Yeah. The, the underlying data is all all there. So right. It's, it's, uh, and I think the text was just describing what the chart was. So for, so for you know, I'm hoping it won't be a, a huge okay. effort. Sure. Absolutely. Okay, but it's we still have to do it. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, but certainly appreciate the effort, Tim. <laughs> it, it reflects a lot of information. That's why we're asking so many questions. <laughs> yeah. okay. uh, another question I had, um, maybe you have it on top of your head. Our general stabilization fund is three plus million right now. General Excuse stabilization me. fund. The stabilization fund is three point four million. Right, and the capital stabilization is around two hundred and twenty thousand. Three twenty. Three twenty. Three twenty. So is that? Very common that the capital is so low. So, um, yes and no. Um, so, it it appears as though we don't necessarily fund our reserves in town as as would be suggested. So, um, so what we're doing is we're we're taking um, the pool that we have been getting. So and then that's the free cash pool and making that fully available to the capital process to take care of all those things in addition to any deficits that exist in the current operating year. Mm -hmm. So that's the first priority. When we get the free cash, we look at what's our potential deficit for snow and ice um, that we'll have to cover. So we'll take and we'll, put, we'll set that aside and then the rest of it will be made available to the capital process. That doesn't necessarily mean that we would use it that way. Right. That's, yeah. his, that's what that's how it has I've been. seen over the last right. three years, no, I, going backwards. Sure, no. What kind uh, of reserve fund would other towns put capital? Like, is there a capital reserve fund that other towns will have? Or? Some towns well, have yeah, and yeah. Actually, the town I came from, the town of Harvard, mm -hmm. has a bylaw written in to it that um, you fund any deficits, you fund the 5% of the general stabilization that we talked about the other day. 
and then everything else goes into the capital stabilization fund and you have to appropriate from there. Okay. Mm. Now, it seems like we have a healthy general stabilization fund, so is there any thought of pushing more on the um, capital stabilization? Well, I think Mike raised that, or you weren't here, you weren't oh, here, oh, I'm sorry, uh, <laughs> earlier this week, because this started back in probably 2012, where it was like one, a great idea in 2012 to have a capital stabilization fund. So, because we used to, at the time, we would get a fire truck or something and borrow on it. If we had a capital stabilization fund, we're always putting into it, and you finally would build it up so you, every, all these trucks and things, you just take out of that instead of borrowing, you know, Which paying, doing paying, again paying interest. Mm -hmm. And, and we, we never actually borrowed from it. We put it in for one or two years and then um, interest rates got low and, and it wasn't as, when you're paying, I don't know, what's what's our short-term borrowing rate, you know, is it 3% or? Well, yeah, less. It's under, it's under that. Less. So like it, it, yeah, so, you know, back in 2011, 2012, it was, it was higher than that. Okay. So we're at the point in this budget with, uh, with the limit of the tax impact that if you want to raise the capital stabilization fund, you're going to have to take it out of the OPEB or you're going to have to take it out of the operating stabilization fund or you're going to have to not hire the new police sergeant or the new firefighters. But it's a closed box. Now, if, if you want to have a discussion of it would be a different discussion to say, should we have more than a 2.5% tax impact and increase our stabilization funds? That's a different discussion. When you talk about taking out of one stabilization fund to put it in another, it's really a $5 bill from your left pocket into your right pocket. When you talk about not hiring a public health nurse, that's actually something different. No. That's, a, that's, a, that's, a that's, that's a great point. I, I, I think that's right. Now, I have two comments to that. One is I think it all almost always leads to our strategic planning and long-term planning that how we tie these and actually plan when uh, you know we send my son is going to go to college soon so I, I did want to start planning early on right if you want to buy a house you want to start planning early on it's not exactly the same but we do need to think about those that's one and second is I'm thinking do you feel that or when do you think we would feel comfortable okay we have three and a half million for operating stabilization, maybe that's sufficient based on the variance we have seen over the last few years. Now let's start accumulating more on the capital stabilization. So and as Mike was mentioning earlier, that it was intended, and that's a great intention, I think, originally how it started, that fire trucks and the like can be um, funded through that. But now we are seeing even this year that fire trucks and others, we are going back to borrowing again. Right. So, so I would, I think, argue that once we get to the 5%, uh, the 4.3 million mark on the operating stabilization, to the extent that we have money to put in stabilization, it should shift to OPEB or capital stabilization. Either one would be a prudent thing to do. Uh, and then you have to balance that with the, the levy limit that people want to achieve and what the real new growth needs are. Do, will we need another firefighter or more teachers uh, given growth. I mean, that's exactly the, mm -hmm. the kind of thing you'd want to lay out and show the trade-offs. So in Shadow, we kind of discussed this um, at the last meeting about oh. how, you know, we're, we don't, I think several of us on the committee, we, ne we didn't take a vote, don't feel like we're funding some of these funds as they should be. Um, I don't know if we want to add something. I know we do have our, um, Narrative. Our narrative. I mean, we do talk about how we don't think it's funded, but I we said the same thing last year, and it still wasn't funded. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know if we want to make a stronger statement in, in this um, narrative to say, you know, we should be funding some of these mm -hmm. funds a little bit. Actually, that's a great. Yeah. If we do, I don't think we want to vote on that. Right. So and somehow we communicate it more strongly, or maybe another charity if someone looks at it. We haven't really gotten any writing done so far tonight. Mm -hmm. What we've got is new ideas and new requirements, and we have a deadline Monday. So uh, we can work on the, the ideas, but we're going to yeah. need to land this plane yeah. at some point. Mm -hmm. So do we want to, as a committee, take a stance that's a little bit stronger than what's written in the narrative here about the OPEB and potentially the stabilization. 
and, you know, and say we advised last year to add more and again this year. Um, I think so. Uh, that, that's my opinion. Yeah. But, um, Are you on page three? I'm or on page three, page three yeah. the very last paragraph. Great. And we had a little placekeeper there. We just took it out because we were we we thought you might. We didn't know if you would want to try to vote tonight. Well, we're in a meeting, and the chair has a mouse and a keyboard, and you you can it's your report, and you can. Uh, mm -hmm. We're in a posted meeting, so you could add a sentence or add a comment and. It might be better than the other iterative opportunities we have. Right, exactly. Well, the thing to make it stronger is that it, it, this has been a trend. This isn't yeah. the first year that we're under, mm, underfunding right. it. Um, the, the trend over the last couple of years is that we're continuously underfunding OPEP mm -hmm. and, and we're, we're, we're just kicking the can down the road, yeah. which I won't write in there. But, um, Mm -hmm. We could even add something at the very end. This has been a trend over the past, you know, few years that we think needs to change or something. But then we're adding that negative. Right. Yeah. And I think Tim, you gave a quite a few good data, right? We have 27 million in liability. We are funded up to what nine million, and it's going to be 2090 when we'll actually reach our commitments. Yeah. Here we have, right? so I, th I think the numbers are like 29 and two point. Three, but you're 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 basically oh. you're on it. Oh, 29 and 2.3. I think so it's, it's 29 million as the liability, and and I probably shouldn't be speaking from memory on this, but uh, so just I'm, I'm I'm thinking those numbers at least with me resonates. Oh, it's in the report. So let me just flip that. to show the kind of severity of the challenge, so to speak. Right. <clears throat> Mike, would we want to consider moving it? I mean, when I looked at this, I thought it was we're three point three and a quarter percent funded, is where we are. For open. Okay. Would we want to move this higher in the letter? I mean, it just seems yeah, I know, that's burying a it. Note. Oh, that's yeah, okay. yeah. That not burying. Bad word. That far down. Yeah, I'll just make one mind. The one thing that stuck out to me with this, I. Obviously, get other folks thought, but uh, the next three years shows budgets will continue to stress tax. I just don't like the use of stress there. I don't want to second guess someone's yeah. writing, but it just yeah, that's burden. That's a good point. Mm -hmm. I like burden. Which where are you at? Are you? It's the paragraph that Mike is working on right now. It's the second oh, okay. line. Oh. Um. Can we just say we'll continue to increase? Okay. Uh, are you looking for a stronger? I'm looking for stronger because that's okay. what I hear in folks. Burden sounds bad. I like burden. Stress. Yeah. I, I mean, stress. We're not making them exercise. I just think it's kind of. 74 page document. If you're changing stress to burden, we're going to take that as a good outcome. <laughs> so, it's good. And just one other point to some of the, the items that were in yellow. Um, right. I know we talked about limiting, limiting them to cost drivers, not to increase the work, but uh, was the plan to put one year's data in there? Because it seems like some of those would really feed into the narrative of growth, yeah. of growth and, and growth and the impact on the police department, on the fire department. Again, with three days left, I don't think for this. Yeah, this cycle. this is really an excellent February discussion, and you know we're just I'm just catching up to the process. So, so uh, I completely to, understood. To, no that time I series. We it would be ideal to do time series data. Yeah. For for all these metrics to show how the trends are going. Yeah. And that certainly would be the next iteration. We're yep. trying to figure out what portion of the loaf we could bite off in this mm -hmm. in this time frame. 
Did we talk about last time that we also want to add that we're using op we're using um, free cash for our operational budget? Mm -hmm. Do we want to um, maybe put a, a paragraph that says, you know, some of the, the things in the budget that we'd recommend changing are A, funding, you know, instead of having this separate one, funding some of these stabilization funds, the OPEG and, and stabilization more fully, and also not using um, Stress. free cash for operating oh, funds or something. Yeah. So, or you just want to point it out and not have it be a... So you're going to produce a report Monday night. The selectmen are meeting Tuesday night, but I don't know that they have the opportunity to change this budget now. I'm not asking them to change the budget. Even if they want I'm to, just... for, but for forward-looking, yeah. you might make a forward-looking statement yeah. to say, you know, these are, I, you know, objectives that for the Appropriations Committee. Or, or, I don't know how you, how you want to do it. I. We, we can comment it as an observation and our advice. I was, was going to say, could it be a talking point? Right, yeah. This is part of my things we will focus on in future years. Sing, things we'd recommend the town focus on? Is recommending they be addressed in, yeah. Yeah. in, in future budget yeah. Yeah. cycles? I don't know that it's true that they can't change the budget yeah. at that point. I, I, don't, I don't know. Yeah. Actually, we what their the operational budget. I don't know if it's on the agenda. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know what the, uh, I don't want to run afoul of the timing of the town meeting. Mm -hmm. That's my. So, but we are recommend, we're supposed to be making recommendations. Mm -hmm. That's what yeah. the charter asks us to do. So technically right. we could. I know it's not done, but that doesn't mean we don't have the right or the authority to make a recommendation. Right, um, I agree. Yeah. I don't think, I think when we say recommend here, we're yes. not recommending that we change the budget. I think we're just recommending that this is paid attention to in the future, because I think mm -hmm. it's not something that jumps up from a board of second perspective or from other, you know, board perspective. This is one of those things that, you know, I think as a, an appropriations committee, we've got to be helping to set the financial policy on these things. I think if that's, I think if that's the approach, then in addition to writing it here, um, it should be something that is uh, delivered in a meeting with the board of select uh, so that they're actually hearing it. So mm -hmm. Tuesday's Tuesday's the last is the meeting, and I can I don't know do I have to request to to say ahead of time in part of their agenda or. Uh, if I, I show think the agenda has been set. Is there, is there, is there anything it would be you know, worthwhile to make a request to him so yeah. we can. Yeah, because if it's if someone doesn't deliver it verbally, then yeah, it's not going to It's it's definitely not going to rem be remembered next year yep. when budget time comes around. Yep. Although some people should read. <laughs> I was going to say if, if this is a, yeah, if this is then the way that the the budget process is working isn't as effective as it could be. So that's something to look at next year as well. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's one of the reasons that, you know, I, I'd like to see this group involved in the process a little bit more heavily. Uh, I know that, I know that the chair, uh, you know, goes to the advisory group meetings yeah. and things like that, but, um, you know, it's a lot to expect one person to remember everything you want to bring into the next year. Right. Uh, and I don't think it's, I don't think it's outrageous to expect uh, this group to be involved in an earlier process. And, and I also think, I think you suggested at a recent meeting that maybe the appropriation meeting meets in the fall or the summer before the budget starts to also identify some financial policies we might want to, again, suggest, yeah. Yeah. Um, recommend as they're developing the budgets. So also in the interest of full disclosure too, uh, there was one item that was um, in the capital budget that's gonna be paid for via free cash for senior center cameras. Um, after some consultation with the CIC and a rethinking of the number of cameras, um, that number came down below their purview. Um, so that was, you know, on a um, procedural note, moved to the operating budget. So we would see an increase. Um, I think the stormwater was in there last time, but essentially the same um, thought process that because it's not in the CIC purview, it was moved to the operating budget. But because the budget had been set in the 2.5% um, 
tax impact reached. That's why there wasn't any other change. Thank you. Oh, good. All right, thanks. Mike still wordsmithing and again, great TV. <laughs> <laughs> using burden twice in the same paragraph, Mr. Chair. Oh, you want to take a stab at it? <laughs> <laughs> we do minutes. You do this. <laughs> Acting the underfunded reserve, underfunded. Watching uh, when someone tries to make an amendment to uh, a motion yes. at the time. Oh, it's almost as yeah. exciting as C-SPAN sometimes. I'd like to see our commitment increased, or, or this committee would like to see a change. We'd like, we'd like to see it. We'd like to see it uh, brought in line with um, with actuarial recommendations. So, Mr. Chair, are you planning on going to Tuesday's meeting? And I can go to Tuesday's meeting. Okay. So we have two people you trying to get him go. on the agenda. I will uh, work talk with uh, Maria tomorrow okay. morning. Okay. Um, you know, I know that we haven't we haven't voted on any of this stuff for recommendations, but at the last meeting, I was um, uh, you know mentioning the line item for the Hopkinton Day celebration. Um, you know, I I would. I think that that message should be brought to uh, to the board as well. Um, I, Can I'm we not vote on it to make sure we all support it? That there's majority. That's that's why I said we haven't voted on yeah, it. Yeah. So, um, yeah. I'm not sure. I'm not sure that that change in the budget was entirely visible to everyone there. We can definitely discuss that, and I think it really is comes down to, because uh, it probably will be a, a transfer, an account transfer at the end of the year, and they're, I'm sure uh, Ben, Dave, Tim, you have an idea of, of I know where his accounts are these days. I don't know if it waits to last a week before, you know, what do you have, 10 days or a couple of weeks and at the, before or after the end of the fiscal year to make the adjustments. Mm -hmm. And uh, usually, you can yeah, through July there, must, you, there must be something else in the budget that can be uh, waiting for those transfers to happen and those numbers to clear up. Um, I just don't think that I don't think it's a it's a good look. Um, and I think it, I think that uh, the townspeople who are on the boards and committees in town. Uh, should be should be representing that that day is important uh, to the town for from a cultural perspective, and I think it should just be funded, uh, period, without waiting to find the change in the couch. 
Was that 25,000 or was that 30? 30, 30, 30, 30, and I'll reiterate that I disagree. Um, and I think it's actually not a good use of taxpayer money overall. So, which is why I suggest a vote so that you could be representing the majority of the appropriations committee. You, if we're going to discuss it as a the chair. I may be the only one who disagrees. <laughs> Sorry, I missed the first part. Where are we moving it from? Or proposing to move it from? It's not funded right now. Right. Um, there's a, a line item and, and they removed the funding for it. Um, but the anticipation is there'll be some end of year. So where are we going to get the money from? You know, we have do account yeah. transfers at the end of the year. Oh, okay. um, yeah. And yes. And we think we can ob ob obligate the money at the end of this year instead of doing it next year. And that would be done with no impact, no overall impact. I'm sorry? So there'd be no overall impact to the spend. It would be a. It would be. Well, it, it, it would to free cash. We'll have some less free cash a year and a half from now or 13, 15 months from now. And right, that's the way it cycles. Well, if we're considering paying from this year. This year. So the free cash will get certified this summer, and that's what we'll be spending next year in the 2021 budget. So it'll be a little less money in the $30,000 less in free cash to support capital articles in the 2021 budget. I think that's the flow. Did we discuss what are the kind of drivers? It's it's the cultural aspect. Yeah, of no, it. I think that I think that um, I, you know we had this discussion the other day, but yeah, I want to make sure that you have uh, the other side of the story as well. Uh, from the sounds of it, I, I don't think that this year uh, that thirty thousand dollars would be in danger of being funded. Um, you know, it sounds like after all is said and done with expenses, it'll be found and. After the budget's already been passed, there will be a way to put $30,000 back in there. I personally don't think that that's the way to approach uh, a day that's recognizing our community. I think it's a relatively small line item, and I think that um, the meaning of, uh, of funding that right from the start, as opposed to waiting to see what we have left over from the prior year, uh, I think that that holds value as well. Um, so. If, if, if we're that confident that there's going to be $30,000 left uh, from other funds that we can transfer, let's find it somewhere else in the budget, but let's put that line item uh, for Hopkinton Day back. And you know what I mentioned the other day, I just, I just remember uh, you know, the 300th anniversary celebration and you know, what, a, what a unifying event. I, now, granted that there were events going much longer than one day, um, but that one particular night that everything was happening behind uh, the schools, that that was uh, a pretty unifying evening uh, in town. And while the town has other big days through the year, and we just went through one with the marathon, this is the one that's really focused on the townspeople of Hopkinton. And I think it's important to just let everybody know that um, this this is funded. This isn't relying on extras from the from the prior year. <laughs> Do we want to take a vote on this? I would like to, yeah. So somebody would have to make, a, I think, right. some motions, right. seconds, votes, okay. and you right. can... Mm -hmm. um, I move that uh, the Appropriations Committee vote to recommend to the Board of Selectmen uh, to uh, um, reinstate the $30,000 line item uh, allocated to the annual Hopkinton Day celebration. Second. Do we have more discussion or just vote on it? Mm -hmm. I just want to add a little bit. I, I think, you know, it's, it's a tough call because in, in a way it's a tough call because we do want to be vigilant of the costs. And we again and again see that uh, resonating theme that we do need to uh, watch out 
more and more. I think that's where mm -hmm. you know it's it's coming from. But the same note, it's uh, I'm just giving out my perspective. I think I agree that this does weigh into the community's uh, kind of uh, unifying or united celebration, as well as uh, <coughs> making it a, a special event for the families and the whole town. And comparing that, and it's probably not the same quantifiable <laughs> yeah. value um, that's measurable. I, I think I would see the value, you know, more from a, uh, a, a emotional side of things yeah. in this yeah. particular case. And because it's not a big yeah. line item, um, that's why I think <laughs> yeah. I'm looking at it a little bit more favorable. But uh, I, I totally see your perspective yeah. and I respect that. And I'll just, I'll just say my perspective yeah. is that this is something that is half of an FTE for the school. We're giving, you know, we're, we're monitoring very closely how much we're spending on FTEs. Um, and it's not an insignificant cost if you're thinking it of personnel. Um, other towns, they have other organizations that pay for these. You know, the town of Natick, or the town of um, Needham has a huge Fourth of July fireworks. The Lions Club is the one that funds that. Um, in other areas of the country, you get, you know, different uh, companies in the area support it. So I don't know why it has to be coming from taxpayers. I think the town is a, it's a great idea. It's a great unifying thing. I don't think we've ever looked for funding outside of the taxpayers, and I'm not sure that something that just kind of goes off from the sky and if you're not in town you don't benefit from it um, and really it's just burning stuff in the sky is, is worth that much money. No, I think the argument is very compelling, absolutely. Right. But do we, can we come to some understanding that we will make a strong recommendation of looking for other funds but at the same time we go with it for now? Is that, does that balance it? In other words, we can pencil it in but our recommendation will be for these types, can we look for other sources and sponsorship and other things uh, in a more proactive manner? Could, could you add that to the motion? I, so I'm on the feds, I, yeah, it's <laughs> very agreeable to you. Mm -hmm. However, having the family and I, have, as many of us have enjoyed these events in the past, I do think they bring the community together. Will not have an immediate impact on this year's taxes, if I understand. Um, I don't think we're there yet as a town where we need to be pulling this stuff. Um, yeah. Maybe a different discussion in another year. Um, I certainly see your point, Rebecca. Um, yeah. Find an agreement. Um, and I think it may be a little short term to try and fund this for this year or for 20 by going to the town. I'm sure you could, I mean, you could think of companies around town and we could certainly get right. out. But mm -hmm. we maybe amend the motion to add a f recommendation for future funding? Um, so pass it this year, but we rec I don't know how you would do that. I, I think that's a, that's what I was. Yeah, I mean that's we, your point. If, if kind of you directionally try to mm -hmm. correct it, uh, but couldn't agree more on that. And that's a very compelling argument. I mean, when you compare it with the teachers and some of the other mm -hmm. urgent stuff, I mean that's undeniable, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, I think, it, and I think that uh, it's absolutely reasonable to set up a committee to try to. Uh, if not fully, at least partially fund yeah. these uh, through yeah. through private funds as well. And, and that um, could happen next year. I mean, you, we could ask that um, someone does try to fund it, and we don't have to use that money if, if they can find some private funding. Um, I, I also I also think that um, while we may we if if we want we can boil thirty thousand dollars into half an FTE, we could do that with so many other things in town as well, and start you know pitting you know, one cause versus another, um, I, you know, and I, I, well, I could come up with a lot of, I could come up with a lot of things that aren't necessary in town, uh, but could certainly raise the ire of people and, and say, well, you know, that's a half an FTE, or that's a quarter FTE, or that's a full FTE, and I don't think we need to get to that level, um, uh, you know, but again, I just think that it's, it's important that this line item is recognized. Um, it has been funded over the last several years, and I think that um, I think that we should be continuing that. And if the board of selectmen chooses in future years to put together a committee to uh, uh, do more fundraising, uh, then you know obviously that would be great. You know whether it's taking this line item all altogether or 
you know, adding to it to make it bigger. Well, my final thought is I'm kind of I'm in the middle here <laughs> where let's see, let's see one end, one end, sitting three here. people <laughs> in the middle <laughs> literally where I, I do think it's important for the town to have but I do think there is a funding strategy for it and I don't think it should be added to the line item but I, I do think we'll find a way to fund it um, as we're talked about and and I think it's probably one of the higher items on the list that we use at the end of the uh, the budget season or the uh, fiscal year. And if it's not there, then plan B is to get private funding and, and fundraising to help out there, but I don't think that'll be the case because it's not, like we said, we need the teachers. There are certain operational things we absolutely have to have. Uh, this is not one of the things we have to have, but I think, well, it's great to have, and I think we should have it, and I think the funding will be there this year. So that's why I'll probably vote no, just because I think it still will be funded. Ready for a vote, or does anyone have anything else they want to say? That's a good point. So I think you wanted the certainty, but we do feel that there is certainty. <laughs> In, in many ways. Well, I, no, I, I, and I don't doubt that there's certainty, um, but I think it's I think it's the message behind the act that that is just as important, and that's my that's my thought process. And um, yeah, yeah. So. And I'm trying not to do my personal because I was at the 300. I thought it was great too, but mm -hmm. then the next year, I had other things that weekend, mm -hmm. and I, I didn't make it. So I don't know how the turnout was next year. I assume it was still pretty good. So I'm not going to be biased about mm -hmm. that. It wouldn't be in the budget, or I'm sorry, it wouldn't even have been talked about if it wasn't still popular. So I'm, assu I'm making the assumption that it is still popular. Right. I, th I think Mike convinced me. I think emotionally I'm there, <laughs> but I also think that it is going to be funded in some ways. Um, and while we, you know, talk so much about uh, fiscal uh, uh, discipline, I think this gives us an opportunity to also send that message. <laughs> so well, you that. know, it's, yeah, I, you know, it's like, it's like being on a diet and then, you know, saying, but I really, really can't have that cookie <laughs> ever, <laughs> you know. <laughs> making it hard for uh, You know, I think my, my point is, I'm not saying that we shouldn't do it, I'm just saying there's, there's alternative ways to fund it, that's yeah. all, that it doesn't yeah. have to be taxpayer. Um, I think it's a great idea and it's a fun day and, as you said, it brings community yeah. together, but Let's find another way to find the money. So can I propose if we vote and it doesn't pass, can we put another motion to fund it through other means? Or so the commitment is, the the commitment commitment is, is to fund it. That's necessary. You know, I mean, this, this, I, this motion this is, is not to, is to bring it up to the Board of Selectmen right. and discuss it with them. That, that's all it is. Oh. Um, yeah. It's right. not we're going to vote right. it in or out of the budget. So. Uh, yeah, and, and I don't want, you know, I don't want anybody feeling uncomfortable like if they vote against this, yeah. you know, they're going to offend yeah. me because I'll go as a person, as a citizen and just, you know, speak to the Board of Selectmen on my own without, hey. you know, yeah. without this committee. So, uh, you know, don't feel like you have to vote my way so that I don't get my feelings hurt. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I, I want it to happen. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have an eighty million dollar budget. We have to start getting <laughs> approvals for, and we're stuck on this uh, thirty thousand dollars. Yeah, I have fun. All right, can we have a, a vote on the motion to uh, bring up with the board of selectmen uh, that we want to fund uh, um, Hopkinton Day celebration? All those in favor of bringing it up, say aye. 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 Opposed? No. The so three two it passes. Bring it up. Are you sure you understood the question? Uh, <laughs> it's your feelings. <laughs> do you think you're unanimous on the OPEB funding, or do you want to debate and vote that? So this is just, just the wording in the in the, the shared document, right? Or, or are you going to bring it up to the board of selectmen as well? I don't think that was controversial, was it? I don't think was anyone in disagreement. Let's do a quick vote. I move that we approve the language to support. 
uh, fully funding to the actual recommendation in the OPEG trust fund to the Board of Secondary's attention. Second. Uh, Discussion? Up for it. Oh, we got we got agreement on the two ends. So that okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so was that the vote? No. 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 Yeah. <laughs> was like, uh, Any other discussion? There's a discussion. No, okay. I didn't, if you. When you said four, I thought. Okay. Um, I said that's my discussion. Though. Yeah. I think everyone's been talking about it. Yeah. Unless anyone has a dissent. I think it needs to be highlighted. If okay. You. Let's just. You're doing the minutes, right, Chuck? I I'll watch the. <laughs> no. That's your, that's your, that's your I had. I, I, I wrote down both motions. The, the first was to, to motion to recommend the board of selectmen reinstate the Hopkins okay. Day line item in the budget, and the second was to approve the language to support fully funding the actuary recommendation to the board of selectmen. Okay. I was wondering how. You know. <laughs> okay, we're ready for a vote. All those in favor of bringing up to the Board of Selectmen about fully funding OPEB, say aye. 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 Opposed? 5 0. We'll bring it up. Finally, I think the last item was uh, going into the, uh, the operational budget using free cash. Mm -hmm. That, that's the first year in many years, and I don't like that. Hopefully, it's yeah. a one-time thing, but to be made aware that this is not, to, at least to this committee, it's not a financially prudent thing to do. Mm -hmm. that's that's <laughs> <laughs> but I'll make a more, you know, unless I, um, I was the only one. I don't think I was the only one. Yeah. But, uh, What's the motion again? To? I'll make a motion um, mm -hmm. just to bring up to the Board of Selectmen uh, that the uh, we're using free cash for operational budget and um, that's not a good trend and or it's not even a good practice this year alone yeah I'd say I'd say even a little stronger it's it's not good practice and um, I mean I think it's misleading you know when we start talking about the two and a half percent impact and things like that I mean I think that it's pretty pretty well accepted over the years that that's not something we want to do and then to do it to cap a number at two and a half percent um that's just not a good mm -hmm. not a good thing mm -hmm. okay especially when it's not going to happen okay. today <laughs> did anyone second that motion <laughs> i'll second it okay any more discussion or is that uh, ready for a vote all those in favor of bringing up uh, the fact of using free cash for operational budget is should not be done. Say aye. 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 Opposed. Mike. Uh, no. Uh, I'm sorry. I wanted to reverse the other motion if there is room to do it because when I think Ben phrased it, I understood it. The way I understood the first time you said that was <laughs> that we are recommending to fund it from. Other sources. I'm talking about the uh, Hopkinton Day, but Wait, whose motion was it? Was it Rebecca's motion or was it Todd's so motion? Todd. Yeah, that's why he was confused. That no, he what? just moved uh, to reinstate the dollars. Moving with Todd was saying. Yeah, after I checked if you understood the question, <laughs> <laughs> there were two motions that were supposed to come up. Right, one was that put it in the line item. One was that not put it in the line item, but propose that we fund it from other uh, means. I think that was. But which one was proposed was the first one, I think. First. Put in the, yeah, Todd, Todd moved to reinstate it into the celebration. Reinstate right. the dollars into with, the yeah, celebration. Yeah, with a recommendation that in future right. years they try to uh, find other funding uh, sources. Uh, yeah, so I, I wanted to actually vote no on that because I didn't fully understand uh, the way it was phrased. Can we reverse that? No. <laughs> I want to put it in there. Like going context. home with my ball now. <laughs> yeah, unless Todd no, I think to I, bring it up no. Again. I think that no. It, as a committee, we could we can vote to um, uh, basically retract that vote. Okay. And as long as you are one, you have to make the motion because you made a. Yeah. You voted for it, mm -hmm. and it passed. I think you have the right to bring. I cannot bring it up. No, okay. I thought I mean, Rebecca Todd can't. did as the one who. But it doesn't have to be the one who. I think that's to retract it all together, okay. to retract the motion. I mean, you know, it, it, it's nice for us all to be absolutely formal and, and get this stuff right. But I think that we all understand that. Yeah. You know, but the we're, we're, is, yeah. But yeah. A, it's legal to do. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, and B, you know, it's Chuck your jewel misunderstood. So. so, are you undoing the direction to talk about Hopkinton Day? Is that. 
Yeah, right. yeah. we're back on. Yeah. And oh, you're just going to go as an individual. Hmm? Is there an actual motion? To retract oh, that vote? Right. I'm not going to retract it, but. Yeah. Yeah. I moved a motion to reverse the. Uh, I think, is it rever you know, reverse? You have to re we have to retract terms. it and then do it again. Okay. Retract the warrant for uh, putting the budget item for the Huffington there. Second. Like amending that. Anyone second that? I'll second it. Can I, I can't. You guys have to do it, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or we're challenging our reference rule. Not my knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, let's just do a revote. <laughs> Going back to Hopping and Day celebration. All those in favor of talking to the Board of Selectmen to say they would like to see it back in the, a line item in the budget. Say aye. 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 Opposed? No. No. Okay, Thank best two out of three. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's still a three two <laughs> vote. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Now we will not be brought up. Anything else? Anything else to bring up to the yeah, board? I want to change my vote on open now. Let's do it again. Is that all? Just the, kidding. Is that, Just all, the, kidding, is that all the items? Yeah. <laughs> all right, it's nine o'clock here. Okay. Not too bad. <laughs> all, right, all right. So that's it. So that's for two, you know, Tuesday's board of selectmen meeting. So if, if, if I could, to the chair that. Um, <clears throat> So Monday we'll uh, vote to approve the report. Um, the the warrant and the motions um, I passed out this morning. I've I've understood that the motions the, the language doesn't need to be completely finalized to make a recommendation. If it's the decision of the committee, that if the numbers don't change, there could be some legalese adjustments through council. Um, they have not done final approval of that, but the the articles um, in the warrant will be signed by the board of selectmen on Tuesday. Um, and included in the uh, Appropriations Committee report are those articles um, to decide whether the committee votes to approve or, or recommend or not recommend. So that's in the report, and you also have a separate package to talk about for the articles. The, the motions, yeah. The, the motions, motions don't have to be approved um, right verbatim. Now. We could. So just to catch up where we are, you're going to communicate some things to the board. There are four things you've asked for for the appropriations report. The first one is to take the metrics out. The second one is to find a target debt level and insert it in that debt chart. You have asked us to look at the uh, subsidy, the debt subsidy in that debt chart. And then you want text for the long-term debt chart. Actually, the if you could look at last year's AC report, it's not just the, that one particular chart. I think there was text on many of them that explained them. Um, okay, so, so we added a series of, uh, you know, I have it, and it's just not that many, so we can look at it. But why don't I just give you the copy, and you can okay. let me know more what you... Because we, we, we don't have an iterative opportunity, so I want to be exactly sure I right. can get what you're saying. Uh, and then you wanted to add the bar chart back in. Right. I have a copy of it, so I can... Um, oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think the benefit when we actually started was not just to have the charts and pictures. It was really to have a, a simple explanation yeah, to explain all the different things. That's why the, that, that was... So, so my list again is target, take out the metrics, have a target debt level on the long-term debt chart, uh, talk about the subsidy, represent the subsidy in the long-term debt chart, add text to the long-term debt charts, because I think that's where it's, it doesn't exist now, and then add the bar chart back in. So I think that's five things. Are you copying two or? Yes. Okay. That's good. Okay, and then uh, we will have those things and have them for Monday night. And if they're satisfactory, you can word adjust them then. And uh, we will vote on the report then. It'll have all the articles in it too. Correct. Which are in there now. So 
So Monday night we're looking at maybe a 15 minute meeting. Is that or what we're talking we need, about? We need to vote the motions though. We need to vote. You know, you might be able to do a. F so so we're going to be having another meeting. full meeting. Oh. oh well, it won't be in this room. Yeah. So it'll be somewhere wherever right. Ben posted. Lower level or on third floor. Yeah, I think we need to yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't. I didn't realize we already had a meeting scheduled for Monday. So. Yeah. Right. That was added to today, um, just right. to be able to get meet that deadline. Do we just have the one meeting next week, or are there? We weren't going to have any. Then we were just now talking about the need to have one. So. Okay. I may be a bit late Monday. Travel. Okay. I think having one after Monday is probably doesn't get you. Well, we have to get through all we the have, motions. We have to vote on all the motions. Okay. Yeah. And do we want to? It's ten after nine. Do we want to do a, do a couple to see how it goes? I, I think it would be great to to uh, plow through. Ben is ready. Yep. Okay. Be ready to plow through some. It might it might go very well. So uh, the way this could work too is uh, there could be a standing motion if the board so chooses to um, recommend a vote. Um, and then as long as all board members consent, there doesn't need to be a, a motion and a second to motion for each article. Okay. And which document are we going to go through? The is the motions document or a different document? I, I, I would, I would offer to the committee the, uh, so does everybody the, have the articles, um, not, the, not the warrants. Uh, or not the motion. Does everybody have me. this one that has, um, this has the motions so written out? So it starts with article what's, two, It starts with three. supplemental yeah, appropriation. Yeah, yes. so what's the, what's the file name online? Oh, uh, I have, I have two of them. So I, I, I would recommend that the, the articles be reviewed, not the, the motions at, at this point, um, because the, the, the motions do not need to be approved for in the um, Appropriations Committee report. Right, but there's a lot to there's a lot to go through. So Correct. you're saying you want us to do just look at them and not vote on them? Can you be explicit about sure. what document we're sure. working on? Sure. So, so uh, the uh, it's, it's this document um, with the first page: Commonwealth Massachusetts Town of Hopkinton Annual Town Meeting Warrant. Um, within that are 30 articles yep. um, that are going to show the approval, um, the recommendation, or the not recommendation in the Appropriations Committee report. In addition to that, um, the committee will make uh, motions. Um, those don't need to be approved tonight or as part of the uh, Appropriations Committee report. Okay, so, so, so those so could you be saying later. these, the one on the warrant, we do have to make recommendations? Correct. To be, in? To be included in the warrant. Correct. Or to be included in the report. To be included in the in report and the, the warrant, excuse me, so. So the, the, the first one would be that is ready is Article 4, the property tax exemption increase on page 3. Okay, so the action you would propose this committee take is that somebody makes an initial motion that allows them to approve individual articles they like without formal motions in, for every one. It's a streamlined method. Can you go through that again? Correct. So uh, is, you can choose to uh, make a standing motion to approve, um, and that can be seconded and then voted on by the committee. And then each time a vote comes up, a vote can be taken without a need for a motion and a second. So it's a bit of a streamlined process, but there is still a vote on every item. And are we voting to have these included? The vote we're taking is to have these included on the warrant. This isn't to because we also will vote whether or not we support it. Right, so it's the vote to, to recommend approval. Okay. So if so we don't approve it, it doesn't mean it won't go on the warrant. It, it will, it, it correct. It'll still go on the warrant, but it, it, it will um, show that the committee does not recommend approval or recommends no action, I think is the official term. So our vote is to whether we recommend or not. Yep, so we don't have to make it a motion. We're just voting on the... So first you need a motion to adopt this process of going through them what you call what serial approval or whatever Correct. term you had for it. And if somebody has to second that, then you have to vote and agree to do that. Then you'd vote on the substance of each thing without the need for motions in second every time. So I will motion, make the motion that we use the streamlined approval process for, these rec for the recommendation, for the articles requiring appropriation committee recommendation. I think second. that's a bingo. Correct. 
I second. And that doesn't commit you to approving any of them. It just creates the method for going through them. Less talking. Less documenting for okay. Shaka Is that right? Correct. Uh, yes. Okay. Discussion? Ready for a vote? All those in favor of the streamlined process <coughs> say aye. 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 Opposed? 5 0. Motion passes. So uh, there are a few options for the committee to consider. Article two and three, um, there are some remaining open items. Num article number two is the supplemental appropriation and transfers. We don't have the final numbers for those yet. And then the unpaid bills from prior years, um, the committee could choose to, to vote on that now, but typically as we go along the process, there may be a few more that pop up. Um, article four um, would be the property tax exemption increase on page three. And that, that one is final. So we discussed that at our last meeting, and I sent you all a Excel file today, or a Sheets file, and it showed exactly who, what, when, where uh, the impact of that article is, and it showed a total of a $1,600 increase based on our current users of all those programs. And it includes seniors, surviving spouses, minors with deceased parents, 10% disabled veterans, Purple Heart recipients, surviving spouse of combat fatality, 100% disabled veterans, blind homeowners, and then there's a separate group uh, that's less generous or more generous, seniors over 65 with uh, low threshold income and assets. And the total impact would be $1,600 if we do the COLA for that article. And that's on the file I shared with you today called Summary of Articles, that, that whole presentation. And this is something that uh, is done every year. They COLA these exemptions, and the chart shows you what they're up to now. The average exemption, for example, for 10% disabled veterans is $746. The exemption for Purple Heart recipients, average of four, $774. That's the exemption, and it would be cola and we're just estimating 3%, but the COLA level has not been set. So we're we voting on each one individually, or we're going through the whole yes. list? Yes. Each Correct, you vote on each one individually. But you just have to vote yes or no. You don't have to Make second motion. and everything else. No motions. Uh, Mike, uh, the chairman, just says yes or no. Yes. I call a vote on it. Yeah. Right. Okay. okay. Yes, sir. So we start with number two? Number four. Yeah. Number four. Number four. You're saying <coughs> two and three are not ready. Correct. Is that? Okay. What about in question one, or we're not going to vote on as a committee? Uh, correct. Not, it's a board of select. Not within your purview. Good. <laughs> Ma'am, <laughs> <Okay. laughs> your purpose. Okay. It's not your, you don't have to. So we're voting on Article 4, 5, 6, 7? Uh, <coughs> or one at a time? One at a time. So one at a time. A time. I, I haven't done this process before, so no. that's why I'm. Okay. So Article 4, any questions about Article 4, the increase explain? in the property tax exemption? And it, had, it was wrong when it said personal property. It's for real property. That's why you see personal crossed out there. Okay. Oh. Ready for a vote? All those in favor of yes on Article 4 say aye. 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 Opposed? Perfect. Five zero <coughs> carries. Number five is the first of the Brave Acts. I also had the chart that showed that one. The, that is for the 17 clause 17 recipients we only have 17 d recipients of all the different ones which is seniors over 70 and i don't really know why the seniors and minors are in uh, and surviving spouses are in the brave act but they are uh, and there's a higher liquid asset threshold for this one and no income threshold so less generous benefit the benefit is 445 dollars a a year in exemption and we have 12 of those people in the town we estimate the cost of, the, of giving them the cola will be 128 dollars i think i'm getting the hang of that okay. that's all the data there's no more data on that that's every bit of it right ready to vote on article five 
All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Five zero. Motion carries. Article six. Article six. This is a new category. Uh, there are broad exemptions for veterans and other qualified people that we have just been talking about, but it's only if they own the house themselves. Some people have their house <coughs> in a trust or a conservatorship. This would extend the benefit to those people. So we don't know if there are a couple of veterans or a couple of uh, low income elderly or a couple of Purple Heart recipients who have their houses in trusts, but if there are, they would be entitled to this under this uh, provision. And you know, the, the benefit ranges from 400 to 1,000 to a complete exemption for the surviving spouse of someone who dies in combat. Uh, but we just don't know if there will be any or if there will be a few. You ready for a vote on Article 6? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? 5 0. Carries. Okay. Uh, the next one is the exemption for surviving parents. Uh, this is the Gold Star Parent Provision. The Gold Star Parents were in previously, currently, for a $400 exemption. This would give people who lost a child in combat a complete exemption parallel with what the surviving spouse gets. We don't, uh, we have one surviving spouse in town. We don't know if we have any Gold Star parents, but if we do, it would be a complete exemption. Ready to vote on Article 8. All those in favor of Article 8 say aye. 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 Opposed? 5 0. Was it 8 or 7? I'm sorry. Oh, let's do it again. It's Article, Article 7. Seven. Right? 7. The last of the brave acts. Oh, hold on. Um, can, I, can I do it again? Because I said yes. Article 8. We're voting on Article 7. Uh, all those in favor of Article 7 say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. 5 0. It carries. Okay. Article 8 extends the senior work program to veterans. So right now, people over 60 can come and work, volunteer for the town up to 125 hours at minimum wage and get a $1,500 credit on their taxes. This would allow veterans of any age to participate in that program. It could be a 28-year-old veteran. It could be a 41-year-old veteran. We would assume that already the 63-year-old veterans are already covered under the senior program. So the new participation in this program would be <coughs> that group. For the senior work off, we have 50 participants, and it costs us $62,000 a year because they don't all work the full, the full amount of hours. So we just don't know how many veterans under 60 would take advantage of this, but this extends them that same opportunity that seniors get. Okay, Article 8, ready for vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? 5 0. <coughs> motion carries. Okay, why don't you pick it up here? Because that was the Brave Act was my. Sure. Uh, my Article act. 9 sets the uh, salary of the town clerk by the Board of Selectmen. The amount of. I have a number right here. We need to vote this on Article 9? Uh, no, that's, that's the, the Appropriations Committee report, so if, excuse me. Well, we're on a roll. We might as well, if, yeah. unless somebody objects to it, if we can come up with a number. 69627 dollars and 20 cents. Do we know what? Um, it's included in the operating budget, so it's part of the omnibus budget, the, the various funding sources. What is the increase? Yeah, but yeah. from what? Oh, it's, it's an increase, right? Yeah. It is, yes. $67,599.22. So, 69? $2,021. Is that 
three three percent. Yeah, about two point five probably. Two point five, a little more. That, yeah, is that something that is it? Uh, I mean, a relatively arbitrary number that gets presented, or uh, is it following the handbook uh, or anything like that? Yeah. Um, we would have go to ahead. go back and double check on that, but well, I do believe there was. Back. I think there was a zero percent last year. Was it? Even two years ago. I know he did take one in one of the recent years. Yeah. Okay. All right. Ready for a vote? All those in favor of Article Nine, say aye. 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 Opposed. Five zero. The motion carries. So Article 10 is the fiscal operating budget. Um, I think if we were going to talk about the full committee report, that could be something we discuss on Monday. So we're talking about the content of the report, but nobody has suggested that the report will not concur <coughs> with the budget. So you could actually do this one now if you choose to do so, because I haven't heard any discussion directing us to prepare a different approach. Right? Well, do we approve it before we talk to the Board of Selectmen? Yeah, I think we talk to the Board of Selectmen before we approve it. I don't. If, well, if we're going to have recommendations, okay. Then, okay. Yeah. So you're going to you're going to approve your report Monday, talk to the selectmen Tuesday, and then address the article later. Is that mm -hmm. okay? And that's that'll work. Correct. Okay. Yes. Does approving the report imply that we're approving the budget because there's content in there from the budget there's a sentence in there now that has not been edited that says we recommend approval of the budget that, that was kind of my point but mm -hmm. and you haven't directed us to change that but you could still do it without I mean it's a word so you could do it Monday night uh, you know I mean it could always be that and I'm I'm sorry I don't have it up in front of me but uh, you know if it's worded such that we're approving a budget of you know this amount I think it that's says the it budget that's what it says it I is yes yeah. in the amount of 90 million 025 252 90 I thought it was 80 so yeah it's all our other sources I just want to bring this up getting into the semantics of the charter that we have to have the the report approved and finalized 14 days before or we have to have it posted you know this is my first rodeo but uh, everything we have been saying and doing has been, you know, in setting up the meetings and talking about it, has been talking about this for having it done, having the report done before Monday. Well, we're so talking if about the, if your experience is that that's not correct, I'm very open to that. Just because, although did the charter include last year or was it starting this year? I think it was starting last year. So we so we we were. I think we posted it, but I th think we had to make, we're making changes very late. We were still doing, because the budget was so far behind last year, we were doing, we were inter So we talked to the- I, I looked at some dates and we were still talking to departments on the 23rd of April last year. So I don't think we had everything done. So we talked to the, to the deputy count, town manager today about this and she said, that's what the charter says, but it could be late. And it's not a, there's no penalty or that fine. The charter actually has the calendar in it. it the, that was supposed to be voted outside every year. Yeah. The budget calendar is, is set. They didn't put it in the charter. They specifically uh, were trying to avoid it. I believe it's a, it's a specific provision about 14 days for the Appropriations that, Committee so report. That, that Should they believe it's separate from what you're referencing? Great. It always crunches on us. <laughs> so. Are we I mean, anticipating that after we speak to the Board of Selectmen that final amount's going to be changed? So I, don't, I don't want to say that why are we it's just out of time. If I could just lend an observation. Mm -hmm. um, so this is the document for all the people. So if you post something that's not finished and they don't go back and get the updated version, there's going to be a lot of questions that come up on, okay. on you know, the night of town meeting. Yeah. So if we're not ready, I would... It's not that I it's... Would, Put, you know, use that as a uh, means to make your judgment. It's not that it's not ready, but sometimes we ended up some numbers in the budget change. We, I don't even want to say the the night of town meeting, but yeah, <laughs> but that has happened. That has happened, happened, you know, happened, that has happened <clears throat> therefore our <clears throat> document is out of date, yeah. and here we are, two plus weeks away. 
Yeah. So the language yeah. we use, well, it says proposed. Um, that, that could be a motion issue, how we deal with motions. Uh, because at town meeting, people can make motions mm -hmm. on articles anyways. So if we're consistent with how we do that, you know, and, and not make the change outside once the once the booklet's published, <coughs> I would suggest any change has to be made through the motions. Right. And just an observation again, it's just trying to help and assist with the process. Mm -hmm. So maybe a bylaw and not the charter. I'm surfing the charter right now. So it could be a town bylaw rather than the charter. But you know what, it seems like you're quite close. So there's that, we have that. Because I mean, we, have, we haven't waited until town meeting day to publish the AC report. We try to, you know, I think- Well, we you have to, it. we print it, but we generally could print it a day or two before. Okay, and, okay. Um, but we usually, I thought it had to be completed online a certain time before. Right. Um. You know, I think again, some of it, some of it comes down to uh, how comfortable how comfortable is each member with the overall number of the budget. Um, from there, you know, we do have recommendations for possible. Well, at least one recommendation for a possible change. <coughs> OPEB number, um, you know, if if people are comfortable voting on the final overall budget number, as it's stated in the report, and you know, s inside saying, all right, I'm comfortable with the budget, whether or not they put the 220 extra 225 into OPEB, um, then it seems like we could vote on the document right now. Uh, if there's anybody sitting here saying, yeah, I'm comfortable with the overall budget number, uh, provided that they move another 225 into OPEB from somewhere else, well, then that's a different story. Um, you know, then if I was that person, I wouldn't, I wouldn't vote to approve the report until I find out what the Board of Selectmen intends to do. Mm -hmm. Are we going to find out on Tuesday or will it take more time? Okay. I would think that what will happen on Tuesday is that the Board of Selectmen, uh, as long as they have room to still change the budget, um, I would think what they would do is have some discussion around it. Uh, if they feel the same way and, and they're in agreement, then they may ask um, the finance team and the town manager to go off and make some recommendations on funding that other 225 without impacting <coughs> the 2.5 percent. Um, and if they do that, then it then it might change after Tuesday. I don't see it. I, I would I would be shocked if it changed on Tuesday, uh, unless the town manager is watching us right now and starting to prepare some alternative script. I just saw, I just looked at the section of appropriations committee on the bylaw and there's no reference to a... Uh, so page 20 of the uh, town charter, um, section B. So I'm back to the charter now. So the, the reads, the town manager submit all financial articles to the appropriation committee in accordance with the budget at least 14 days prior to the date of the annual town meeting. The, appro the appropriations committee shall issue recommendations and detailed explanations of all financial articles in an annual appropriations committee report. Yeah, there it is. But he's not giving us the details until 14 days before? Was that the first part? Uh, no, so at least 14 days before the date of the annual town meeting, the Appropriation Committee will issue the report. Um, the town manager will submit all financial articles to the Appropriation Committee in accordance with the budget schedule. Um, What's the budget schedule say for him? Budget schedule. So that isn't specifically addressed in the... Right charter but that was issued it's in the appropriations committee report that memo from the town manager. Okay, so all i'm saying is if there's anything that 
you know, we're supposed <clears throat> to make recommendations on and we don't have numbers yet. Right. It's difficult. Now, it seems to me the requirement is for the financial articles to be done by Monday as well. Right. Right. That's how I'm reading this. And I think we're doing many of them. Yeah. yeah. And, and I think we have the numbers for the budget. And uh, as to your point, unless somebody is going to suggest that the budget number change to solve the OPEB problem or and you think that then the number is known and the other changes you have asked us to make to the appropriations report don't affect that number. I mean I would rather meet on Wednesday and we I would rather not approve until Either we're going to speak to the Board of Selectmen or not. Mm -hmm. I know we, we want to. So there, I think it needs to be on a meeting on Wednesday. Then we'll approve it or make a decision on Wednesday. I think that's the committee's, in, you're, you're, you're in charge of your committee and you can, um, we're, we don't, we're not telling the committee what to do okay. in any way, so. Should we also post a meeting for Tuesday night, just in case more than two people show up to the Board of Selectmen meeting? Five. Just as a safety. You can do that. Yeah. Okay. So that means we're not going to meet on Monday then? We are. We're going to meet both days. Well. Can we approve it? Um, on Monday and say, you know, if the, if pending, no changes? So uh, up until town meeting, the approval is not binding. Uh, there could be another vote if you so choose. So the requirement is to produce the report, and the report has language in it that suggests, that expresses your sense, but it is not a vote. Is that correct? Correct. It is not a vote on an article. It is a, so you could be that board that issues a report <laughs> saying you like it, and then vote against it later. It could happen. I think it would be not improper. We were for it before we were against it. Has <laughs> <laughs> a ring. I mean, I still think we have to go. We have a lot of articles. I don't know. Are the warrant? Is the, are the motions going to be ready on most of the articles? Because that's that's going to take a while. We have, sure. So, we so the the, the motions are, are ready now um, for the majority of the articles. I, I would just caution that uh, council has not. Um, Finalized. He's not re reviewed all the uh, motions so tonight. Okay. So we want to skip Monday and then just do Wednesday. I think that sounds like a good idea. That sounds good. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Great. So I would say it's probably more important to have the vote you want in the sequence you want. That that's probably the most important thing. Yeah. Do you want to keep trying to go through the ones that aren't tied to that specific number? I think it's just the one. We can still do, can we do what? Revolving funds, any, do you have any concerns about that? Article have you ever seen Are the numbers? Uh, yeah, yeah so, so in the, uh, there's another sheet that I sent out um, that, that has the title Article 2 FY19 Supplemental Appropriations and Transfers. Those are drafts of the motions. On page three of that is a listing of the spending, proposed spending limits for the rolling phone. Um, there are no changes from last year other than the library who asked for $1,000 more. They went from 9,000 to 10,000? Correct. Are you talking about this document? So we're ready for a vote on article 11? Did everyone see the numbers on the uh, the other supplemental handout? Yes. Just one question. Why are there why are there multiple lines for DPW? So page four. Okay. So oh, is it just for multiple revolving funds? Okay, thanks. Tim, sorry. Why does why does DPW have multiple lines? Uh, do they have multiple revolving funds that they draw from? Uh, I'm going to guess. It's Highway water sewer. sewer. So, Ben, we're on the unnumbered page four. Correct. And there's three successive lines for DPW. 
you have a back? Eight thousand, fifteen thousand, and eight thousand. Uh, is this yours? That I'd have to. Uh, I would have to look back on it. Uh, I can say it was consistent with, with prior year, uh, but for a specific explanation, I can, I can certainly get back to the committee. Dave, do you have any idea what those funds are? I, I don't. It's, it's been quite a while since I've right. seen them. last year's. Huh. I'm looking at last year's, and it said the same thing. Oh. The motions document? Yep. And we don't anticipate these numbers will change. I'm sorry? We don't anticipate these numbers will change. Correct. We made all sorts of changes to these last year. Well, nobody commented on last year. So. It probably is the different Apartments. parts of the DPW. Ready for a vote? Can we wait until we know what they are? Yes. You could, the, you, the committee could choose to wait. Okay. What is last year's uh, report that we can put out with? Yeah, probably documented. We had the changes in them. I don't see us actually listing them out, but let me. All right, the next one. Uh, so, <clears throat> excuse me, um, the, the next one would be the uh, Chapter 90 funds. Oh, excuse me, uh, the PEG Access Enterprise Fund. This would be the vote to accept the uh, Chapter 44, Section 53, F and a half of the MGL to establish a PEG Access Enterprise Fund for cable television public access beginning in 2019. Where would the money come from? I, I've seen checks come in for small surcharges on cable use, and uh, so yeah, it has to do with uh, the negotiated um, cable um, company. Mm -hmm. uh, they they negotiate um, a uh, they have they, as part of their um, contract, they're obligated to. Um, back some funds into the town okay um, for use like for um, for this particular right. thing that we're doing here they usually pay for a teacher at high schools for like for audio visual um, presentations mm -hmm. and things like that for people that want to go into this business okay. of uh, broadcasting and things like that so um, the money comes from that from that source. Okay, ready for a vote on Article 12? Uh, 13. 12? Mm -hmm. This 12, the PEG Enterprise. <coughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? 5 0, motion carries. So, Article 13 is to accept the uh, state uh, aid for Chapter 90 highway funds. The amount this year is $643,095. That's it's consistent with with prior year. I think it was maybe a, a hair under six hundred and forty thousand. I'm sorry. Is that coming from the state or is that? That's coming from the state, correct? There's there's a approximately five hundred thousand or five hundred fifty thousand in the operating budget to supplement these funds to get to the um, recommended um, highway maintenance program. Okay, ready for a vote. Article 13, all those in favor? Chapter 90, Highway Fund, say aye. 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 Opposed? 5-0, the motion carries. The next is for the uh, transfer from the um, free cash to fund the General Stabilization Fund at the amount of $208,000. 208000 208 Okay, Article 14, ready for a vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? 5-0, the motion carries. Uh, the next item is, is pending some language from legal counsel. It has to do with a host community agreement um, that Todd alluded to earlier. Um, so I would recommend that we, we skip that item. 
following that is a, a transfer to OPEB. Um, what's in the budget now is, is $400,000. And then I would just add that what this article is doing is, is recommending that money be moved to OPEB. Um, the uh, motion will outline the amount of money. Um, so all this does is in the Appropriations Committee will bring forward that motion. So all this article does is approve a transfer to OPEB. So if we are, if they may potentially change that amount, we could do that in a separate motion while still approving this? C correct. You, you would not need to vote again on this article. You could change the motion um, if, if there's agreement with the Board of Selectmen. I would, I'd recommend we wait to vote on this until we see the final number. I think Ben's saying that we don't have to wait because we could yeah, change. I'd, st I'd still recommend that we wait. Uh, and Todd, it says to see if that. So if we don't vote it, how will they see it from our commentary? That's what it is. Well, we're getting together again to vote on some of these next Wednesday. So okay. we can, we can um, wait for that. make the recommendation to the Board of Selectmen and yep. see their, rec their uh, reaction. I agree, just based, just based on the principle. Exactly. So the next article is the pay-as-you-go capital expenses. Um, and the only change from what's been shared earlier is the senior center cameras that I mentioned have been rolled into the omnibus budget uh, based on some feedback we received from the CIC. Um, and those cameras will be ma mainly uh, focused on the exterior of the building. And those were rolled into the operational budget when? Uh, I would, I got the direction from the town manager late last week. So the, the roll up happened earlier this week. It was after the 30,000 was already pulled out of Hopkinton Day? It, it was afterward, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so so but we, still found, we still found another 10,000 over there for, for cameras. Okay. Just so the, the funding source Just the, keeping track here. <laughs> the, the funding source remains free cash. Uh, that's why I, I made that, that full disclosure earlier. You're getting to a full teacher, full time <laughs> teacher. <laughs> so where were they before? They were in the app budget and now they're in the pay go. They were in the pay go and now they're in the operating. So they were stricken okay. from uh, so, the most updated. Okay, so this is this is part of that uh, free cash that's being applied to the operating budget? Affirmative, yes. <laughs> okay. And, and Ben to clear But for an item that was in the pay yeah. go yeah. before. Yeah. I got it. Hey, ben, quick question. So the earlier recommendation was from uh, the inspectors, right, for the security cameras? Uh, so the initial recommendation was um, with the IT department and the PD. Um, there's a yeah, I think the police department, the, um, the certified crime prevention um, person. Um, so so th th there was some thought that perhaps the the recommendation was. Um, not sure you use the right word, but uh, more than what was necessary, that there was a camera that was facing the copier. Um, so, so there was some rethought um, with the PD about um, making the best use uses of the camera available, and, and the real goal is to um, protect the seniors. Um, so that's where there's a thought to um, make sure that this feed is goes directed to the dispatch, and then to focus on the exterior of the building to help with the, the um, vandalism, or if you know somewhere were to fall, um, that could be captured. So I see. So the same inspectors now revisited the recommendation and thought it's not as critical as they thought. Correct. It, it's all done in consultation with the, with the folks at the police department. Okay. Correct. Gotcha. Thanks. Okay. Are we ready for a vote on Article <coughs> 17? Plus. Plus. Sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. All those in favor of Article 17 say aye. 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 Opposed? 5-0. Motion carries. So the next item is a, a valve maintenance trailer system for 65000 that will be paid through the Water Enterprise Retained Earnings Fund. Can you let us know um, of the next several, which ones are coming from either water or sewer? Certainly. So uh, Article 18 is coming from water, Article 19 is coming from water, and Article 22 is coming from sewer. Um, 18 and 19 will be from retained earnings, 22 will be coming from through borrowing. Okay. So 20 and 21 are just direct DPW purchases? Uh, highway uh, is part, part of the general government, correct? Thank you. All right, ready for a vote on Article 18? 
All those in favor of Article 18 say aye. 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 Opposed? 5-0 motion carries. So as I mentioned, next will be paid for through the uh, Water Fund Enterprises. Retained earnings for $50,000 to be the replacement of an existing truck. All those in favor of Article 19 say aye. 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 Opposed? 5-0, the motion carries. Uh, the, the next is for a proposed purchase of a bucket truck for the highway division. Um, I'd like to reiterate here that the, we received some guidance from the Board of Selectmen to purchase a used vehicle. Um, so that's what we will be doing if it's so approved. Do we, have, um, do we have the DPW materials on the shared drive? Uh, not all of them. Um, so there's the, the memo that, that uh, Mr. Westling shared, but I can certainly share um, any information you'd like as well with the committee. Um, where's, where's his narrative? Just wondering what it's replacing. So, so this um, is a, a new piece of equipment? Oh, new like piece. That. Yeah. Okay. This is a new uh, item that they don't have. Correct. That we're planning to buy a used one, and we uh, dropped the price from a uh, more expensive new model, and they felt they could buy a used one. Is that correct? That, that's correct, yes. And okay. we had testimony on this. I don't know if you were, you might have been out that night. I think it was here, but that's why I was looking for the materials out to refresh my memory. Right. Um, and then I'm sorry to kind of jump around, but um, can you give us some background on 21 as well? Just sure. So we can kind of look at them together. Uh, so <clears throat> the multi-purpose municipal tractor will be um, to maintain the sidewalks around town to clear the sidewalks. Currently, there are two vehicles. Um, so this piece of equipment, the proposed, is $177,000. Right now, there's a um, bit of a bottleneck with the number of pieces of equipment that are available. Um, so right now, the DPW would have three people to work the sidewalks. They only have two machines. Um, so the two machines. Because there are only two machines, it may lead to um, school, school opening later um, or the sidewalks not being cleared. Um, and another piece in terms of the amount that it's important to keep in mind that the, you, the sidewalks are not cleared until after the storm is complete. So that's all of the really hard ice snow that has been pushed off of the road onto the sidewalk. So it, it is difficult to push through. Um, so that's part of the aspect of this, the cost of this machine. And so, so the idea was they could operate three simultaneous rigs and be done in six hours instead of nine hours. Correct. And, also and so if they buy this, they'll actually get to the sidewalks in my neighborhood? Nope. No, they're never going to do no? that. No? <laughs> <laughs> they say, do the core the area. <laughs> uh, and I think if I remember, there was no incremental headcount cost. If you, so if you, you vote for the overall the budget, yeah. maybe we can make that. <laughs> The so, but but a, a note is that the sidewalk expansion that we're also improving is one of the reasons they also need to get more of these um, yeah. to clear those. We haven't, we haven't gotten to that yeah. article yet. <laughs> that's right, because that's in the school district, right? Yeah. It's in the school yeah. zone. Um, and in, in terms of the bucket truck um, as well, that Eversource will clear some trees, but there are only certain dead or dying trees on certain roads. Um, so this will assist the DPW in, in um, overall long-term cost savings by not going out to the private sector. And part of the strategy with buying a smaller pieces of equipment is that the trees that are, the trunk is wider than this table, we'll have to go out to the private sector anyway because we won't have the expertise to do that job internally. Um, but if it's done, Internally, we won't have to pay prevailing wage um, that we do if we were to use the, the private sector. All right, ready for a vote? All those Which in one? favor of bucket truck. bucket truck? Article 20, the bucket truck, say aye. 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 Opposed? Do we still want to talk about the tractor? We kind of all know about that now. Okay. I'm good. Yeah, I think Todd, you missed that uh, hearing. All yeah, um, I'm. I'm also on that now. All those ready for a vote on Article 21, multi-purpose municipal tractor. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Five zero. Motion carries. So the, the next item would be uh, uh, funded through a borrowing through the um, <coughs> Sewer Enterprise Fund for an update to the Comprehensive Wastewater Management Plan. Um, and, and part of this will be to determine the, the best use um, and you know, making sure that 
um, services is rendered properly to, to citizens that may need it. $70,000 for Article 22, the Comprehensive Wastewater Management up Plan Update. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? 5-0. Oh, so the, the next item is um, phase two of the sidewalk um, master plan. Uh, and we can pull up those streets. I think it's in the um, motion. West Main Street, Wild Road, Hayden Row, and Wood Street. $1.8 million, and yeah, it's all right there. How much is it? $1,800,000. Okay. So it's. Um, uh, Hayden Row, 3,800 3, feet from EMC Park to Chestnut Street, West Main Street, uh, 4,200 from Lumber Street to Downey Street, Wood Street, 500 feet from Proctor Street to Walker Street, and Wild Road, 200 feet from House 11 to Briar Cliff Drive. And this will be funded through a borrowing. Um. Is this a land acquisition? No. No, it's the construction. It's all, correct. is it all new sidewalk or? Uh, it's, it's all, it's all new sidewalk. It's correct. And it's for construction. Yeah. How much was the total length? Oh, gosh. So. Not in either of these report. documents. We had it before. Yeah. yeah I want to say it was 5.2 miles. Was that? Yeah, it's significant few miles. I mean. That sounds about right. So yeah. 8,700 feet. I'm not sure what that translates to. That's a, a mile and a half. half. Mm -hmm. um, did this come, was this an article at town meeting last year? It didn't make it last year. It was, uh, it was one two years ago. It was table. Yeah. Oh, we had, we had phase one yeah. many years ago. Yeah. yeah. Ready for a vote? I'd like to. I'd like to see it in a smaller chunk. I don't see that those are all tied to each other, where they all need to be done at the same time. Um, my preference would be to take that in two bites, at, at least. Any other discussion? How would we do that? Would you like procedurally tonight? I mean, I think it's reasonable. Oh, you know, all we can do, all we can do is uh, say whether we're recommending this or not. Um, you know, if if they wanted to change change the ask, I think that they could do that uh, before town meeting, or somebody could amend it at town meeting. Um, but all we all we can do is either recommend or not. It's my impression. I, I, I believe that's correct. Yeah. So do we if you voted problem? not to recommend, someone would probably expect someone to get up and explain why. We can, uh, yeah. So yeah. this this is the second phase of the five-year sidewalk plan. Is this a five-year phase or between one and two is a total of a five-year phase? I don't I don't know the. Uh, so, so I, 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 I can't speak exactly to it, but um, I, I would suspect it's a five-phase process, um, and the number of years have been spread out. Um, I think phase, phase one was the one that went down Ash Street, right? And I'm not sure where else, but that was the major component. Too. But they also did, so they, of, did, they did a lot of uh, West Main Street. Uh, did they do some of Wood Street? No. no, I don't think so. We can get John back in here for Wednesday night. But I think it was multi, it was multiple years. Uh, you know, if you're even considering voting against it, you, know, you might want to just get John in for Wednesday night, and you can have that discussion with him. Unless you just, and we should probably invite him. Well, do we well, want to vote I, on? Can it? I suggest? I mean, he did present already. Um, I don't know if I want to waste his time more my time here in it again. Um, oh. Maybe we vote on it. And then yeah, I think we just vote we and see what happens. If it doesn't pass. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's what I was thinking. If it doesn't pass, then we, you know, he'd happily come back in. Yeah. Let me see if I had this presentation. 
I remember John being here. Was he here one night and didn't get it? He was here the same night as Dave, right? Uh, no, he was no? here the same night as CPC. Okay, I did miss that one. Okay. But he didn't have any materials that he left. Um, so he did, he did not. I can share with you the, the capital expenditure request. Um, yeah. Certainly the details may, you know, I, I read almost verbatim from that. Um, there's not a whole lot more information, but we can certainly request additional information. Mm -hmm. But there was a whole document, Ben, that you sent out that has to, if you look at the topic, this is what we discussed, is that we do have a massive handout, but it's in the handout that was labeled um, fields acreage or something like that, and it has every single capital item, and it has a big description of it. Correct. Yeah, I guess, you know, I mean, beyond the, I mean, sidewalks are sidewalks. Um, you know, I, from the listing of where these sidewalks are going to be, I see them as, um, you know, being, they're not reliant on each other, so they could be parsed out. And, um, you know, we're looking, we're looking at a year A where the Board of Selectmen is trying to limit the impact on taxpayers to a, a strict 2.5% in the operational budget. Uh, and then we start looking at our debt charts and what's already been approved but not applied and things like that. And when we start talking about, um, uh, you know, I know we haven't found any definite recommendations, but when we start looking at lines, uh, you know, around the, you know, four to five percent mark, you know, we're still over that mark for the next couple of years without approving another two million dollars in lending uh, or borrowing, excuse me. Um, and so I prefer to see this come down to uh, a smaller bite this year um, and then you know maybe do the other half next year so well, that, it's it's not so much it's not so much about you know okay exactly which sidewalks are you doing other than the fact that we don't have to do them all at once so in terms of the borrowing is are we even borrowing in this is it even reflective in this year's budget or it's gonna because it's not gonna get done until well we have that estimate of everything that's in this proposal as showing up as borrowing on a chart and there's assumptions about the number of years and the interest rate and that would be the chart on so, so this is reflected in the capital borrowing and it's reflected in the capital borrowing for the general fund that dotted line that top dotted line and the table at the very end would maybe tell us and, and I'm thinking kind of policy-wise, have we talked about or decided that the five-year master plan, are we going to fully implement it or we're going to reevaluate every request that comes through from that? Do we have any policy I, I don't have any, um, but I, I, would, I would suspect that if this is a cap, if it's part of a master plan, the plan has the you know what were the priorities what were all those different things and also had the timeline of when this needed to be done so um, because you approve the borrowing doesn't mean that the work that the money is going to be needed right away if the same company which I would assume would get the work because it would have to be bid out Kind of thing. I don't think that they can be in multiple places. Although maybe they could, and it they could work. You know, they have enough crews to be able to do that. So the the work would be spaced out. So the borrowing would be spaced out. That's an, that's something we'd have to get an answer on. You know, what's the what's the uh, uh, schedule of work that's proposed as part of the plan. So that we could we could best anticipate when we needed to have money on hand. So the borrowing could go forward. It doesn't mean that because we have one of the lines on um, the chart that both Ben and, and uh, Tim presented was that line where we have money that's been approved, authorized, but we haven't borrowed it yet. So, okay. so the I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. I just let me throw in the little factoid. So the the third line on that chart shows what's in this budget and the amount for 21 that we would foresee for debt associated with the four and a half million dollars in capital spending 
of which the 1.8 is probably 40%, is 593,000. So roughly half of that, about 300,000, would reasonably be tied to the sidewalk project in 2021. If we do yeah. a million eight, roughly 300,000. I mean, but, and it's, it's, again, at, we're averaging averages yeah, again, but right. that's roughly what it looks like. In and, and looking at that chart, you know, to, to the chair's point, in earlier. 21 with nothing in 20 but 300,000 in 2021 and and the town being at around uh 9% for the debt that we're carrying um you know and again I know that you know we we kind of throw numbers around between 4 and 5% as a possible target um you know with that line trajectory and nothing else being passed in the next 6 5 5 years anyway uh we don't get down to 5% until it looks like you know somewhere between 25 and 30. You know. Well, and if you have a school, 20. you're not going to see five percent for a while. Right, right. And this, you know, I mean, even even this not making five percent now, it's going to be you know right. that much higher. Every so. every layer, every year, every layer. You're absolutely right. It's uh, that five percent. If if there's going to be new schools and more building, that's going to be a, a hard long number to get to if right. that's your number. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm thinking it's it's a bit confusing that we do a master plan, and then we are hesitant in executing it. Uh, so that means the plan is flawed, or we don't have our heart in it. Well, you need to, yeah, but do you know where the master plan came from? Not the, all of it, but you probably have a lot more, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the ma um, to, to my recollection, and this, I, I could be wrong, but uh, there was no, there was no, you know, separate committee formed or anything like that you know this was more of um, you know what are our sidewalk needs and um, Actually, well I, I, I'm, not gonna, I'm not going to I'm not going to speak no, about the planning board did a sidewalk survey was it the sidewalk survey, the the sidewalk survey? Yeah, so the planning, the planning, so planning is often unconstrained aspirational statements yeah. <laughs> and what planning really needs to be is to consider the reality of constraints so Maybe that's the discussion you're, you're... So, so Todd, basically I was thinking the way you were until um, John Westerling came in to talk about it and the item, you know, especially the two things that, can, that I'm kind of in favor of this now is that one, um, it's the most popular, the sidewalks are the most popular aspect from the citizens in Hopkinton that, that's top on the list. And two, not... I asked this question to him, but not the paving or the sidewalk is it's not equal the cost isn't equal. And probably the most expensive piece is really getting from I don't know, is it from um, Elm Down Street, Street yeah. Elm Street to, to Price Chopper because you have to go under four ninety five and I think that that's probably the most dangerous area where we really need the sidewalk of all the areas and I but I th also think it's the most expensive uh, segment of the two to to also, produce, yeah. but, uh, but I think it is needed because I drive by it every day and, and I see people on bicycles trying to make their way through it and people walking, trying to walk in the, mm -hmm. in the grass or whatever on the side or in the snow and that, to me that it's, it's actually the highest because you have the, the apartments there now and people actually, they do walk to a shopping center. But anyway, the only, the only part of the bike ride that's really bad is when you're going across the on-ramp or the off-ramp. <laughs> That's not going to change. <laughs> yeah. It gets them off the road, though, if they're walking. But there might be signs for them to, you know, there'll be a, a cut for them to do it. Anyway, that, that was because John was here and he yeah. did explain it. And that, well, uh, maybe we can push this to Wednesday and I'll have a conversation with John to see if he can change my mind. But okay. So we can move, we'll move on. So the next item is the school bus parking lot um, for $300,000, which will be funded through a borrowing. Um, you may recall that this is a supplement to an article that was passed last year, $400,000 to bring the total to $700,000. Um, the adjustment is largely related to um, approval that went through the uh, Conservation Commission around water runoff um, and um, I think they can speak more to that, um, but it was largely around um, 
you know, wait, wetland replacement, water runoff, stormwater management. And I know we asked, um, this now becomes a $700,000 project, um, what the ROI was on that, because we were supposed to be saving money by bringing the buses here. I don't, I'm not assuming but that you can ask that. I know I asked the school committee so, that, um, mm -hmm. but they had an, an idea of how much we would Sorry. make on excise taxes because the buses are, are held here. And I think it came out to around a, what was it, a four-year or five-year ROI? Yeah. But now yeah. it's, I think, seven-year. I think it's 100000 a year. Yeah. So I think I, I want to say seven year, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because I think it's like fifty in excise and then the contract, because now the buses are closer. Yeah, no, the um, hours. Makes it is another fifty thousand savings, some, yeah. somewhere along that line. Fifty thousand, sure. Okay. Are we ready for a vote? All those in favor of Article Twenty Four school bus parking lot, say aye. 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 Opposed. Five zero. Carries. <coughs> Next item is the purchase of a $1.2 million ladder truck uh, to replace ladder one, which we funded through a borrowing. Um, and I, I think one thing that um, the chief didn't mention uh, yesterday, and it kind of goes along with the sidewalk plan, that there is a decent amount of lead time um, for delivery of this uh, piece of equipment. It's, it's highly um, specialized for the town on order. Um, so that would delay the borrowing a bit. And it's also, I think, important to consider when we think about um, the, the state of, of ladder one, um, where Chief has talked about that five years when initially borrowed, that you, when it's approved, there will still be a bit of a lead time um, to actually getting the piece of equipment. And this is the one that they renovated. They, they bought one used. Correct. Years ago, for and a, now it's kind of getting. Yeah, 1999 for 150000 Yeah. Correct. Any discussion? All those ready for a vote? Uh, purchase of a ladder truck. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? 5 0, the motion carries. So the next item is a, a public safety software upgrade. Um, so th this is the, the replacement of the existing uh, public safety incident and record management system. Um, it, it includes all associated conversion costs. Uh, we were recently made aware that uh, the uh, company that um, we currently use is sunsetting this platform because they're, they're moving into other uh, business areas that I suspect that they, they believe are, are more profitable. Um, so th this is with that proposal. What's the amount? 375000 Any discussion? All those in favor of Article 26, Public Safety Software Upgrade, say aye. 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 Opposed? The next item is a uh, $200,000 proposed um, renovation to the town hall basement. Um, this would include all engineering, bid documents, construction services, and related costs. Um, so this would um, renovate the existing kitchen, create existing meeting, create more meeting space, um, you know, wiring, HVAC. So it'll be an all-inclusive estimate. Um, and, and town hall, uh, the town hall basement is, is really the one area that's not been, been updated um, in, in many, many years which would also be funded through a borrowing. Discussion? All those in favor of Article 27, Town Hall Basement Renovation, say aye. 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 Opposed? I abstain. Just say no. <laughs> so. Okay. Uh, the next item um, is $200,000 um, for security cameras at the school. Um, this will be the, the final phase of the um, security camera installation. It's been a multi-year um, project, uh, which will also be funded through a borrowing. And the amount on that? 200000 <coughs> Discussion? I'm just making sure this was part of the same um, inspection that was done for the um, um, adult care center? Uh, correct. It was part of an overall security assessment, which will be connected to the dispatch. Right. All, all the other connected and they still stick, stuck to it? Uh, that's correct, yes. Okay. Any 
Ready for a vote? All those in favor of Article 28, security cameras for the school, say aye. 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 Opposed? Um, aye so zero, the motion carries. The next item is, is around, um, it's principally a uh, engineering study around the potential reuse of center school. Um, a, a amount is to be finalized. Um, so th that is something that I can speak with the town manager that, that could be voted on on Wednesday. I would say it's in the vicinity of, of $60,000. That's just for the, the engineering. Do we know if they have, have they've decided on how they use it or are they using this study to help them to decide? It, the study would help them decide an ultimate use. And, and you, if approved, when, what's the duration of this study, do you know? I, I do not, but I can, I can return with that information. But keep in mind, this is in addition to uh, another loan that we're still paying for that the center sense. school replacement study, which was $600,000 that was allocated in 2013. Mm -hmm. um, and we're going to be paying for that through fiscal year 36. Um, you know, right now we're paying in the area of $50,000 a year. Um, I'd love to, I, I mean, I'm sure there are big differences, but I'd love to hear the difference between the two studies and, um, you know, what we're going to be getting out of it. So did we have any discussion on this from any, did anyone bring this to us? Did Dave? Yeah, that was uh, Dave, right? Was it yeah. Dave? Yeah. He didn't bring this, bring this particular item, yeah. but there, there was discussion around center school. Um, right, I didn't, I didn't know there was a feasibility study for the renovation. I thought he mentioned it when he was talking about the infrastructure. Yeah, we didn't discuss that much. Yeah, it was kind of study we didn't discuss. Yeah, he was, he was talking about it needing a new heating system, which I'll right. also point out that we're still paying for the replacement heating system. Uh, from the study came years. up at one. I mean, it wasn't in depth, but it's a second one. Yeah. yeah. And depending on the duration, by the time it comes out, we may spend another 600000 End up. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I mean, I thought we already had estimates on the cost of a renovation for center school. So renovating it as use of the school. Yeah, I was going to say for for a different use. That whole feasibility was whether or not they're going to renovate it. No, 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 no. The well, you had this whole committee who did this year-long study, and they came. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if they really got into what the cost of it would be. I've heard a lot of numbers yeah. thrown around, um, some very big numbers. Right. Um, but uh, I don't know if there was anything official. I'm assuming that that's what this is supposed to help come up with. Correct. If it doesn't, then I, mean, I don't know why we're, mm. we would consider this either. Seems like we haven't seen the current recommendations as clearly. Sounds like. Can we get a copy of that? Uh, I'm sorry. The feasibility study that's been done already. Oh, certainly, certainly. Okay. You mean the the one the use the reuse um, study or the? We've done one study. Eh? I don't know the scope. Of so there. Uh, so you're not referring to when the schools can add it. The building committee is looking at it as a renovation. You're referring to the how will we reuse it? The the committee that recently met and decided on different options for how to use it. I think he's talking about the first study that Todd the first study. About. The six hundred thousand dollars. Six hundred thousand dollars study. That's like probably this big, just so you know. It's oh, gonna okay. be huge. It, it was it was something that, that they were mm. doing and, and looking at all sorts of things. Right, yeah. I think we're trying to understand that what wasn't covered in that scope and how much value add would be the new study. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. So I don't even see it, you know, I have our I guess I have a March twenty fifth budget. I don't even see it on the capital articles. So that, that, this is an item that was recently added by the town manager, so we, we can certainly get more information to, to bring it forward. Yeah, I'd like, I don't know. Um, Hold off. Yeah, I, I, So, Rebecca, really, so this, this study that's, that we're already paying for, was that the whole thing just related to what are the different options for replacing center school? Yeah. It wasn't for, about what happens, wasn't any recommendations or what could happen with the building in the future? The one that the schools did, yeah, was whether or not they would renovate it for use. Right. So that was, yeah, that was, yeah. okay, we could do this or we could build we another could one build here. Another, yeah. Okay, gotcha. Okay. No, I, would, I would like whatever department to come before the 
committee to talk about it for me before I vote or get more information. I think that's a good idea. Yep. So the next item is um, the community preservation funds for the anticipated collections um, beginning July 1, 2019. Um, so that would be uh, per state law, 10% to each of the active um, slash passive recreation, historical resources reserve, community housing resource reserve, open space reserve of $115,799 each, and then the remainder of 694794 to the budget reserve undesignated. I know that there's nothing official, but I, I had heard somebody talking about uh, the reimbursement level this year plummeting down to about 3%. Is that something that you guys have heard at all? Or? So the, the, published, the published rate right now um, that is published from the Department of Revenue is 11.57%. Okay. Okay. They haven't changed. I, I keep track of it. I get um, bulletins. Um, so as far as I know, they haven't changed that yet, uh, based upon um, it still has to. There was still this still working on the budget. Mm -hmm. So, but we haven't heard anything. Okay. Uh, there is a proposed change to the rates that the the funds are driven from and mm -hmm. populated by, um, but I haven't heard whether that's passed or not. Okay. Ready for a vote. Mm -hmm. All those in favor of Article 30, Community, community Preservation Fund, say aye. 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 Opposed? 5-0, the motion carries. <coughs> so the, the final item for recommendation by uh, the Appropriation Committee is Article 31, uh, the Community Preservation Recommendations. Um, the outlines $20,000 for historical preservation of land records, $3,750 for historical preservation of um, digitizing photographs, $10,000 for the historical preservation of the most at-risk headstones at Mount Auburn, East Hopkinton, Hayden Row, Bear Hill, and Evergreen Cemeteries, $150,000 um, for the design and construction of a dog park contingent on a $250,000 grant from the Stanton Foundation, $25,000 for the design and installation of a lacrosse wall, $25,000 for the uh, design and installation of an irrigation system at Pine Field, $50,000 for the design of a wetland crossing at Zero Wilson Street to allow access to uh, other recreational lands, and $260,000 for, for the replacement of all existing playground equipment at EMC Park. Playground. When they say playground equipment, is that swings and slides, or is that... Includes the ground cover, uh, that rubberized okay. ground cover, Perfect. and the swings and slides. Nothing to do with the baseball fields or anything like that. Correct. Okay. Ready for a vote? All those in favor of Article 31, Community Preservation Recommendation, say aye. 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 Opposed? Five zero. Motion carries. So th those are the recommendations that um, the committee will bring forward um, at town meeting. Um, there, there will also be the motions which you can review. Um, as I said, we reviewed 27 um, articles that you're going to provide a recommendation on, or excuse me, you reviewed 30 that you would provide a recommendation on, 27 uh, the appropriation committee will uh, bring forward the motion. Those are outlined in the other document I provided that is being reviewed by council and can be reviewed or can be finalized um, in the future. Okay, so we'll cancel Monday and we'll schedule Wednesday and uh, we know the five things you want us to do. All right. Okay. Before we, can we see the final copy of the AC report? Um, it's like you, what you're looking at is the copy that what we all were just on is what we're working from. Right, so if we're going to need to approve it on Wednesday, right. it would be nice to see it at least by Tuesday day so that we sure, can we'll, take we'll a We'll try to get the evening. changes in and so you can see that Tuesday close of business. Yep. Okay. That, that works. So the, there was a question about the DPW revolving funds. Yeah. 
So uh, one is for highway street openings. Um, the other one is for uh, waste collection for trash bags, um, sale uh, of those things, and the other ones for recycling. Hmm. Is it is it new items or? Again. These are new items or pending? No, those uh, are revolving funds. Fund. setting of the, the spending levels. So revolving funds is a dollar in, dollar out. So it's just they can spend up to that level before they have to go to the board selecting for approval to spend more. Okay. Thank you. Like okay, thank thing. you. Good. A very productive meeting. We are really close, I think, to producing the report you want to produce. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for bearing with us. <laughs> Do I hear a motion to adjourn? I make the motion to adjourn. Second. All right. All in favor of adjourning, say aye. 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 All right. Thank you. Thank you.